Tama, okay na po. It's already live. Okay po. Thank you po, Sir Axel. And teachers, thank you also for um, patiently waiting. So, nagkaroon lang po tayo ng technical difficulty kanina. So, I, I apologize, teachers. So, mag-start na po, ta po tayo para hindi na po tayo uh, madelay pa further. No? So, teachers, welcome back sa ating session. Um, isang, isang linggo din ata tayong hindi nagkita. So, ngayon ay Sunday. No, ano na ngayon? Jan June, July, ano ba? July 11 or 10? July 10 na ba or July 9 pa lang? Okay, July 9 pa lang, no. Advance na si advance na si teacher. So teachers, again, good evening. Gabi na ngayon. So sana um nakapag-dinner na kayo para mas makapag-focus kayo sa ating discussion for tonight. Isang um, isang buwan na naman ang magsasamahan natin para sa ating let review para makuha ninyo ang inyong um, matagal nang hinihintay na pangarap ang inyong lisensya. Okay? So magiging LPT na kayo teachers after nyo mag-take ng September let. No? Siguro mga November or by December lalabas na yung resulta at minamanifest and kiniklaim natin na isa kayo sa mga makikita natin on the list of pastors. Sige lang yan. Ma'am, nawala yung audio niyo po ba? Ma'am Mary Joy? Okay, unmute, ma'am. Mary Joy. Okay, sige, ma'am. Pwede, ma'am. Try, ma'am. Hello everyone. Can you hear me? Yes ma'am, yes ma'am. We can hear you already. Sige ma'am. Okay, thank you po sir. So nawala yung audio ko kanina. So yan. Teachers again, uh, mag-continue na tayo. Uh, may I invite everyone or may I encourage everyone to please get your notes and your pen as well so that ma-take note niyo yung mga important concepts natin na i-discuss for tonight. No, itong topic natin ito, um, yung ibang teachers natin, yung hindi pa familiar with Foundation of Special and Inclusive Education. Although I anticipate naman na kahit yung old curriculum, no, nakapag-take din itong subject na ito. For sure naman sigurado. So teachers, uh, please take note of the important terms and hindi lang yan, kundi pati na din ang ating mga tips and strategies na gagamitin for, for tonight. Okay? So... Without further ado, I think we can start. Medyo na-delay na tayo, kaya uh, it's 6.33 na, kaya uh, mag-move forward na tayo, teachers, okay? To begin with, let's start with our item number one. Okay, so please um, paki-chat na lang po ng inyong mga sagot sa ating chat box. Again, item first before yung sagot nyo po. Okay? So, for item number one, it is a body of knowledge or content and or subjects. So, what do we call this? Is this lesson plan? Letter B, curriculum. Letter C, goal. Letter D, philosophy. Sige nga po. So, bonus question ito, no? Item number one. Madali lang to. Okay. Ayan. So, may mga nakikita na akong sagot dito, teachers. We have from Ma'am Jepin, letter A, and Ma'am Joyce, letter A. Okay. 
Is that lesson plan po ba, teachers? Sige nga. Aha. Uh -huh. Hindi lang to for foundation of um, special and inclusive education. Pwede din to sa curriculum, no? Ano to? Nabanggit ko na. Siguro wala nang magkakamali dyan, teachers. Okay. How about the other teachers? Ano po yung sagot ninyo? Okay. And sa mga teachers din nating nasa live stream, okay, sa ating Facebook live stream, Please uh, participate lang tayo mga teachers and of course, i-monitor nyo kung nakakakuha ba kayo ng tamang sagot. Okay, so for this particular item, so tumitingin kasi ako sa other screen ko teachers kasi nandito yung PowerPoint presentation. Okay, so sige. Ano nga bang sagot? Alright, so teachers, again, pag sinabi natin body of knowledge or uh, body of knowledge content and or subjects, that is curriculum. Okay? That is curriculum. So, yung, yung lesson plan, that's under curriculum. Pero hindi tayo magpo-focus muna dito sa ano ba yung mga types of curriculum natin. Kasi mas magde-dive tayo dyan on the um, session natin na regarding naman sa curriculum or sa uh, subject na building and enhancing at yun, curriculum. Okay? So, Teachers, again, yung sagot po dito ay letter B. That is curriculum. Okay? Yeah, um, I'll give you additional information. So, teachers, pag sinabi natin curriculum, that is a collection of lessons, assessments, and other academic content that's taught in a school program or class by a teacher. Okay? So, that is curriculum. So, hindi lang yan lesson plan. No? Vary din yung meaning or yung definition ng curriculum teachers. Pero yan, pag sinabi natin curriculum, kagaya nga nung nasa question, madali nyo siyang matutukoy. Kasi, again, anong sinasabi? Knowledge, content, and or subjects. Pag yan yung nakita nyo teachers, yung naka-highlight na red, that is curriculum. Okay? And magda-dive tayo sa curriculum. Magda-dive deeper tayo dyan pagdating natin sa ating session ng curriculum development. Okay? Sige. Bonus question pa lang to teachers. So, thank you sa mga sumagot. Congratulations sa mga nakakuha ng correct answer. Okay? So, mag-focus pa tayo, teachers, para mas makakuha pa tayo ng mas maraming correct answers. Okay? Sige. Move forward. Item number two. It means that all students, regardless of their color, group they belong, strengths or weaknesses in, in, in any area become part of the school community. Letter A, special education. Letter B, inclusive education. Letter C, education system. Letter D, both A and C. Sige nga. Okay, try kong makapag-check ano, makapag ng ating... Um, Facebook live stream para makita din natin yung ating mga teachers. Okay? Here. Okay. See you get teachers. Ano ba yung sagot natin dito? Okay, how about the other teachers? Sabi ni Sir, ni Ma'am Janine, letter B. Si Ma'am Jeffine, letter B din. Okay, Ma'am Marites, letter B. Same with Sir Arnel. How about the other teachers? So sa ating teachers sa live stream, nakikita ko naman na very participative din sila. So ang sagot po sa ating item number two ay walang iba, kundi ay letter B. Okay, so sa mga previous sessions naman natin, inuulit-ulit din natin to kaya... Dapat talagang master nyo na po ito, teacher. So, bawal na magkamali talaga. Okay. Go back. Alright, sige. That is inclusive education. Pag sinabi natin, teachers, na regardless of color, group they belong, strengths or weaknesses, kahit nga yung race, let's say, Muslim, mga Muslim students. So, yan. Pag, pag pinag-isa natin yan, or pag, um, kumbaga, Kapag sinummarize natin yan, so 
So, ang kalalabasan ay tinutukoy niyan ang inclusive education. Okay po? Sige. Further discuss natin ang inclusive education para hindi kayo malito between special education and inclusive education. Pag sinabi natin teachers na special education, that is learning side by side with peers, those with disabilities and giftedness. Okay? So nakikita nyo na ka-red yung um, learning side by side with peers. So ibig sabihin, hindi lang mag-isa, kundi may mga kasama. Okay? And yung pinakahina-highlight dyan is yung kasama ay mga batang, okay? yung, mga, yung special education, yung mga involved dyan, yung mga may disabilities and giftedness. Okay? How about naman yung inclusive education na nabanggit ko na din kanina? That is supervised by a teacher who teaches regular pupils. Okay? So, yan naman, yung learner with disabilities or exceptionalities, um, gina-join siya or pinag-iisa siya with regular students. So, regardless of their color, group, strength, or weaknesses, or kahit yung race. Okay? Kaya nga, meron tayo na ngayong inclusive education, pinapatatag na yan ng ating DepEd. Kasi, para hindi naman ma-left behind yung mga batang merong um, special needs. Okay? So, yan yung inclusive education. At hindi lang yung mga batang may special needs, but also yung ding mga indigenous na bata, yung mga batang um, kabilang sa indigenous groups, and yung um, kagaya nga nang sabi ko, yung mga Muslims din na bata. Okay? Or regardless, kahit ano, basta they, uh, they belong. Okay? Hindi sila sinisegregate. Alright, so let's check kung ano yung mga responses. So letter B naman, mostly ng ating teachers. no? So nakuha po ninyo ang correct answer. Congratulations po. So teachers, I hope na malinaw na ang special education and inclusive education. And by now, dapat alam nyo na kung paano sila i-distinguish. Okay po? Sige. Let's move forward. Okay, item number three. Blank refers to the practice of educating learners with disabilities, giftedness, and talents in regular classes during a specific time periods based on their skills. Letter A, is that integration? Letter B, is that regularization? Letter C, mainstreaming? Letter D, Specialization. Sige nga po. Alright. So teachers, baka malito kayo ha. Baka isipin nyo na bakit parang same yan dun sa ano. Or baka uh, malito kayo kasi paulit-ulit yung mga giftedness, disabilities, talents, yung mga regular classes. So yan talaga yung dyan umiikot yung special education and inclusive education. So let me see if you're already familiar with uh, these concepts like integration, mainstreaming. Okay, so teachers, madali nyo siyang maiko-cross out yung regularization tsaka yung specialization. No? Uh, mga ano lang yan. Mga pagulo lang yan dyan sa ating choices. So let me try to annotate. So yung specialization and regularization, wala na yan. So pipili na lang kayo between integration, or mainstreaming. So, sabi ng ating mga teachers, ang sagot daw ay letter C. Aha, uh -huh. tama kaya ang inyong mga sagot teachers? Is that letter C? Okay. Let me, let, let's see, okay? Okay, letter C then. Si Ma'am Aileen, si Sir J. Si Ma Marites, all right. Let me let me uh, let me see here. Kung ano yung tamang sagot. Okay, very good, teachers. You got the correct answer. That is mainstreaming. So, mainstreaming refers to the practice of educating learners with disabilities, giftedness, and talents in regular classes. And yan um, in emphasize the teachers during a specific time periods and based on their so, may mga adjustments yan na gagawin. Okay po? So, let's further discuss this one para mas clear sa inyo. Okay, so we have this concepts teachers na kailangang 
ma-master nyo para hindi po kayo malilito. So pag sinabi nating inclusion, okay, that is in a regular classroom daw, si students or yung mga students, they are given different materials based on their needs. Okay, again, inclusion sa isang regular classroom, yung mga estudyante, binibigyan sila ng iba't ibang materials na naaayon sa pangangailangan nila. Okay, that is inclusion. But when we say mainstreaming, which is uh, the correct answer po, which was the correct answer sa ating previous question. So, pag sinabing mainstreaming naman, in a regular classroom, yung mga estudyante naman, they were given or they are given the same materials. Nakikita niyo yung pagkakaiba niyo sa inclusion. So, kung sa inclusion, different materials yung binibigay. Sa mainstreaming naman, same materials. But, again, for a specific period of time and with adjustments. So that is for mainstreaming. And for integration naman po, that is enrolling learners with disabilities in a regular school. Okay, integration, kaya nga integration, pinag-i-integrate, pinag-iisa. Yung mga learners with disabilities sa isang regular school kung saan naroon din yung mga regular students. Okay, so you may copy this one teachers, yung mga naka-highlight na red Okay, para mas madali ang inyong pag-take note and mas madali nyo siyang maiintindihan. Okay? Sige, paki-take note teachers. And master these concepts teachers kasi once na lumabas to, kasi hindi naman nga natin alam kung ano yung mga possible na or kung ano yung talagang exactly lalabas. But of course, these questions are um, possible you know, con this, these concepts are possible concepts na ma-encounter nyo then on the actual letter. Okay, so pag master niya siya, it would be easier for you to uh, to answer. Okay, it would be easier for you to you know to understand the question, kasi alam niyo kung ano yung hinahanap. Okay, po sige. Okay, ah, uh, paki chat sa ating chat box if you're done. Um, copying. Okay, sige. Alright, so I think naman tapos na ang mga teachers natin sa pag-copy. Done na po si Ma'am Jekin, okay na. So yan, yung mga teachers natin sa ating live stream, congratulations sa mga nakakuha ng correct answer. Again, yung correct answer is letter C, that is mainstreaming. Alright, let's move forward. Okay, number three. Reduced function or loss of a specific part of a of the body or organ refers to blank. Is it A, disability? Is it B, handicap? Is it C, impairment? Is it letter D, all of the above? Sige nga po. All right. Ano yan? Um, function or loss of a specific part of the body or organ. Alright, sige. Ano yung mga sagot? Sabi ni Ma'am Aileen, letter C. Si Sir Arnold din, letter C. Si Ma'am Janine, letter C din. That is impairment. Mm -hmm. Sige, tingnan natin later, no? If your answers are correct. Okay, ang daming, ang daming. <laughs> Nalito pa si Ma'am Marites. Okay lang yan, Ma'am. <laughs> Okay, sige. Grabe, excited, excited at tato si Ma'am Marites mag number four. Sige, let's see teachers. Ano ba yung sagot sa item na to? Okay, pag sinabing reduced function or loss of a specific part of the body or organ, that is none other than, parang familiar na yung mga teachers natin dito, no? Parang ano na, kumbaga na-encounter na siguro nila ito sa college or further ano nila. Um, Reading nila. Okay, sige. Let's see. Your answers are correct. Okay, very good, teachers. You got it correct. The answer is letter C, impairment. Okay, let's see kung ano yung mga 
pagkakaiba ng impairment, disability and handicap kasi again, iba yang iba-iba yang mga concepts na yan. Medyo kumbaga pag may, pag hindi tayo familiar and lagi na natin yang naririnig, parang iisipin natin na synonymous lang sila or ginagamit lang sila on the same level, yung yung functionalized pare-pareho lang, no? Pero iba-iba po sila. Ayan, ligwak daw sabi ni, sabi ni ma'am. That is fine, ma'am. Again, okay lang magkamali dito sa ating review. But again, teachers, on the day of the let, hindi na po tayo magkakamali. Kaya kurutin nyo na lang yung sarili nyo kung nagkakamali pa kayo. Kasi at least, mariremember nyo yan or matatandaan nyo yan on the day of the let na hindi nyo na pwedeng ulitin yung pagkakamali nyo during our review. Okay? Sana multuhin kayo ng mga ano natin, ng mga ganitong times na nag-review tayo para pag na-encounter nyo, alam nyo na na hindi nyo na siya pwedeng ulitin yung mga maling nagawa nyo. Okay? Parang iba na yon Charot. Hindi. Ano talaga teachers? Ganon. Applicable din yung salit. Okay. Sige. Okay lang yun ma'am. Um, hanap po kayo ng mas malakas na internet connection. Okay, so sige. Teachers, pag sinabi nating impairment, that is um that refers to the uh, to reduce function or loss. Okay? Kaya tama yung sagot niyo na impairment 'yon. That is reduce function or loss. And pag sinabi natin teachers na impairment, that is just organ level. Okay? Organ level pa lang 'yan. Kaya nga reduced function or loss. Pag sinabi naman po nating disability, That is the difficulty to do certain activity. Okay? Kaya, kaya nga sabi, di, nahihirapan ka na to do something. That is uh, to do something na, alam mo yun, normally nagagawa ng mga normal or mga regulars. Okay? Regular individuals. So, dyan pa lang pag sinabi nating disability, that is on the person level. Okay, difficulty to do certain activity. That is already person level. So nakikita nyo naman po yung pagkakaiba, impairment, organ level pa lang siya. Kaya nga reduce function or loss. Okay? So pag sinabi ng disability, dahil nahihirapan ka ng gawin yung isang bagay, okay? that is already on the person level. At kapag um, uh, nagiging social disadvantage na siya, Okay, that is on the societal level. Yan naman yung sinasabi nating handicap. Okay, so please take note of these teachers para makita nyo ang pagkakaiba-iba nila. Okay po. Pag societal or social disadvantage, hindi na lang ikaw, but also yung iba din, okay, na ano na din, parang kumbaga affected na din or um, yan, nagiging social disadvantage na siya, that is on the societal level, then that is already handicap. Okay po? Okay, paki-chat sa ating chat box if uh, you got it na po. If you're done taking notes of these, uh, classification of this order. Alright, done na. Okay, sige po. Thank you, teachers. Very good. Again, Wag na wag po ninyong kakaligtaang mag-take notes, no? Kasi hindi niyo naman yan ma-remember lahat on one on one ano lang, parang on one glimpse niyo. Pagkakita niyo, then everything okay na. Tapos na. Then baka bukas makalimutan niyo. So, pwede niyo siyang mabalikan kasi na-take note niyo siya. And mas effective po talaga kapag sinusulat niyo, hindi lang naririnig, okay? Sige. Let's move forward. All right. Number four. This refers to the practice of enrolling learners with disabilities, giftedness, and talents in a regular school where students could participate in a mainstream classroom with non-disabled peers. Letter A, integration. Letter B, regularization. Letter C, mainstreaming. Letter D, inclusion. Sige nga, kung nakinig kayo kanina or naintindihan nyo na yung uh, mga unang concepts na hinihingi din for this item, tingnan natin, teachers. Okay, sabi ni Ma'am Marites, letter A. How about the others? Okay. 
Okay, how about the others? Okay, we have seven answers na sa ating. Ayan. Nakita ko na yung mga sagot. Letter C, may letter A. Mostly letter A. Okay, sabi ni Ma'am Zaira, that is integration daw po. Let's see kung tama ang inyong mga sagot. Okay. Integration nga bang tinutukoy dito? Ayan. Very good po, teachers. The correct answer for this item is integration. Very good. Mukhang nag-take note ang ating mga teachers and hindi lang yan, kundi naiintindihan na din nila kung ano, -ano, kung ano ba ang pagkakaiba-iba ng integration, inclusion, and mainstreaming. Okay. So, pag sinabing integration, again, dito tayo. That is enrolling learners with disabilities in a regular in a regular school. And dito sa 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 ano natin, sa question natin, okay? Sabi diyan enrolling learners with disabilities, giftedness and talents in a regular school where students could participate in a mainstream classroom with non-disabled peers. Diyan pa lang alam na alam nyo ng integration siya. Although, mas lengthy yung ating, um, yung, yung binibigay ditong, okay, yung, yung nasa question natin sa item number four. Pero kahit pagbali-balik ta rin nyo yan, kung kilalang kilala nyo na kung, pag, kung ano yung pagkakaiba ng integration, inclusion, and mainstreaming, then madali nyo na lang talaga siyang masasagotan. Okay? Very good po, teachers. Okay, congratulations, Ma'am Jepin, Ma'am Janine, Ma'am Aileen. Ma'am Joyce, Ma'am Zaira, and the rest of our teachers who got the correct answer from our live stream and Zoom. Okay, very good po, teachers. Let's continue. Item number five. Okay, ayan, hindi pa pala ano. Okay, item number five. When referring to learners with disabilities, giftedness, and talents, which does not adhere to the people first policy. Letter A, special child. Letter B, person with autism. Letter C, person with disability. Letter D, person with ADHD. Sige nga po. Gusto kaya ako mag-open ng ano po. Ayan. Ayan. <laughs> Yan, nakuha ko na yung ano. Dito pala dapat ako nag-open ng camera sa laptop ko para... Hindi ako tingin ng tingin doon. Okay, so yun, yun, utilize ko na lang yung sound or yung audio ng aking phone. Okay. Kasi baka nalilito na yung ating mga teachers. Tingin ako ng tingin ko saan. Okay, teachers. Sige nga po. Sa ating chat box. Ano yung tinatawag nating people first policy? Kung talagang meron na kayong knowledge, teachers, it's, teachers itry nyo nga po. Is that special child? person with autism, person with disability, or person with ADHD. Okay, wala pa akong nakikitang sagot sa ating chat box. Nahihirapan ba ang ating mga teachers? Again, uh, teachers, yung strategies natin or techniques, you may use here, um, ano ba? Sige nga. Parang wala pang sagot ang ating mga teachers. Ayan, si Ma'am Jepin, meron na siyang sagot. That is letter A daw. Si Ma'am Jaira, letter C. Okay, ano kaya yung tinatawag nating people first? And teachers, baka na naman may hindi nakakita ng does not. Okay, does not adhere. Alin nga ba dyan yung hindi nag adhere sa people first policy? So later is, uh, later i-discuss natin yung people first policy. Kasi napakahalaga na yan, teachers. Baka hindi, hindi pa yan na-apply ng iba, pero that is very important para din um, in order for us to respect, okay, is ma, uh, maging polite and respectful sa ating mga chill up, yung mga um, individual with disabilities, and so on and so forth. Okay? 
Okay, letter C daw. Okay, so hindi pa ata familiar ang ating mga teachers sa ating people first policy. Pag sinabing people first policy from the word people first, ano yung mauna teachers? People first. Okay, pag people first, syempre yung tao yung mauna before yung disability. Kasi pag disability, let's see, a uh, young special child. Diba parang ano, pag sinabi mo yung special child sa isang bata na uh, merong disability, okay? So medyo ano siya, di ba? Parang negative, may negative ano siya, sound na baka masaktan yung feelings ng uh, ng batang merong kapansanan. So pag sinabi mong um, special child, di ba? Hindi siya uh, hindi siya nag-aagree sa people first policy. So yung iba sa inyo hindi pa ata familiar with people first policy but teachers madaling madali lang naman pong ma-identify yan. And dito, sabi diyan, 'di ba, does not. Try to look at the options. 'Di ba? We have four options diyan. And yung person with autism, person with disability, person with ADHD, they all start with person and that is people. Okay? People, 'yan yung person, 'di ba? People first policy. Uh, yung tatlong yan, they are all, uh, yes, they are all people first or they adhere to people first policy. Pero yung hinihingi is yung does not. So, um, yung technique na gagamitin nyo dito teachers ay yung add one out. Yung pinaka na iba dyan, that is special child. So, madali. Uh, maliban sa uh, kilala nyo yung konsepto talaga ng people first policy. Then, <laughs> eh daw yung lagi yung sagot ni ma'am so maliban sa kilala nyo yung konsepto pero alam nyo din yung pwedeng technique na gamitin so that is letter A special child okay po sige so tingnan natin ayan letter A po yung tamang sagot so sa mga teachers na nakakuha ng correct answer very good po Okay, you got it correct. Letter A po that's not yes again teachers baka may mga nalilit ito na naman, hindi na naman kasi nakita yung does not. Nakita nyo ang daming people first. So, pumili kayo dun sa tatlo without knowing or without checking na merong does not sa question. Nakared na po yung, question, uh, yung does not dun. Okay? So, be cautious po ating teachers para on the day of the let, hindi na kayo malito. Pag sinabing people first language, that is, places the, the focus on the person and not the disability. Okay po? Ayan, nakita daw ni Ma'am Zephine. That is okay. So ngayon, kapag hindi nyo nakita at least, um, or at least on the next uh, questions na ma-encounter nyo and on the day of the on the day of the let, hindi nyo na siya uulitin or uh, i-double check nyo na siya lagi. Okay po? Sige. Again, people first language places the focus on the person. Okay, the person, not the disability. Para hindi naman siya offensive dun sa, kumbaga may mga kapansanan po. Okay? So, people first language yung gagamitin natin. Kahit sa totoong buhay, dapat po ganun tayo. Uh, uunahin natin yung, yung, uh, yung people with, uh, yes, yung people before the disability. Let's say, for example, children with special needs. ba diba, parang ano naman siya? Anong tawag niyan? Parang politically correct naman siya kung papakinggan mo siya. And less offensive siya. Hindi lang less offensive, hindi lang hindi talaga siya ganun ka negative pakinggan. So, hindi naman ma-offend yung uh, maaring makarinig. Especially yung mga children with special needs talaga. Okay po? Sige. So, I think malinaw na to teachers kasi marami yung nagkamali dito. Pakichat nga sa ating chat box kung clear na ang ating people first language. Baka yung iba first time itong na-encounter. Okay. Sige. So I, I hope na clear na. I hope na clear na po siya. Okay. Let's proceed. Ayan. Clear na. Thank you po. Okay. You're welcome po. Number six. In this particular period, Individuals with disabilities were made fun, were made fun of, and mocked for their deformities and behaviors. What do you call this period? Okay, letter A, era of extermination. 
Letter B, era of asylum. Letter C, era of obedience. Letter D, era of ridicule. Okay? So, I think yung iba hindi din familiar with this era. No, anong mga era kaya itong mga pinagsasabi dito ni, ni ma'am sa uh, question na to. But, um, try to try to guess kung hindi nyo man uh, hindi man kayo familiar with this question or with these concepts. At least, teachers, try to make a tawag niya parang wise guess. Okay. Kaya nga importante teachers that you attend uh, reviews like this kasi uh, mas marami kayong na-encounter na mga bagong concepts necessary for your uh, for your preparation sa inyong upcoming September let. Okay? Letter B yung sagot ni Ma'am Eileen and ni Sir J. Again, yung ating mga teachers from our live stream na very active din. Continue to answer lang teachers and congratulations kung nakakakuha kayo na correct answer. Ayan, si, si Ma'am Aileen din. Yes, letter B. How about the other teachers? Med, medyo nahihirapan na naman ata ang ating mga teachers sa questions na ito. Kung nahihirapan kayo teachers sa isang question and then nakukuha niyo yung correct answer, edge niyo siya. Yan yung magpapatap sa inyo teachers. no? Kasi the more na mas mara the more kasi na uh, alam nyo yung mga bagay na hindi alam ng iba then um kumbaga meron kayong edge sa kanila and yun yung kumbaga edge niyo din na maging top notch okay po ayan letter D daw sige let's let's see teachers no no kaya yung tamang sagot ayan letter D po teachers yung correct answer for this so ano yan Iba teachers may mga may mga highlight ako na let kumaga highlight ako diyan na context clue nyo to get the correct answer for this question. So siguro hindi naman kayo um, familiar with extermination. Okay, yung term na extermination, yung asylum, yung obedience kasi ano yan eh, uh, kumaga cross out agad 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 yan diyan kasi parang destructor lang yan. So pagpipilian niyo yung A, B and D Pero, teachers, kung nakita nyo to, made, made fun of, mock for their deformities. Okay? Pag sinabing made fun of, pinagtatawanan, parang, yan, minamak, di ba? So, meron na kayong idea that, uh, yes, because they made fun of. Yan, pinag, pinag, pinagtatawanan. So, pag nakita nyo si era of ridicule, meron kayong knowledge what ridicule is, then, pwede nyo siyang masagot, no? Kahit hindi nyo alam yung mga eras na yan, pag alam nyo kung ano bang meaning ng ridicule and nagmamatch siya sa hinihingi sa question, then, you may find the correct answer. Okay po? Sige. So, the correct answer for this is letter D, era of ridicule. So, if further discuss natin siya, teachers, para hindi naman kayo... Um, hindi naman kayo, uh, kung baga ang tawag yan, pa hindi naman ma-left uh, ma out yung ibang mga choices na hindi nyo alam. Hindi nyo sila, uh, kung baga, mag-next item tayo, tapos hindi nyo alam. So, i-discuss pa din natin sila. So, one moment. Ayan. Okay, so pag sinabi natin, teachers, na era of extermination, that is, Yung tiniting nandyan, yung disability, as negative. Okay? Negative views about disability. Yan yung, um, yung mga tao before, no? Regarded yung pag may disability ka, parang tiniting na nila yan or kinukonsider nila yan as parang parusa sa'yo ng Diyos, ng Diyos. Okay? They regarded that as a punishment from God. So, sobra, no? Parang grabe naman yung mga tao before or during this era of extermination. So, Yan, grabe no? Talagang nagsisignify pa daw siya ng bad or evil. Very dark yung yung era of extermination. Wala silang, kumbaga, they really uh, lack uh, medical understanding kung ano ba yung sinasabing disability. So, nakikita mo na, kumbaga, ignorante pa talaga yung mga tao before. Kasi hindi pa nila naiintindihan 
yung concept ko ng disability. And of course, kasi during that time, wala pa namang, hindi naman wala pa namang, pero kulang pa yung uh, knowledge on technology, wala pa kasi nung technology masyado. Okay, compared ngayon na pag sinerch mo siya, ano ba yung disability, or na ituturo na siya sa mga sa mga learners. No? So, mas nagiging wide na yung knowledge ng mga tao. Mas nagiging bukas na ang mga tao, nagiging open-minded na with regard to disability. And mas nagiging, uh, kumbaga, mas, nag, mas nare-respeto na yung mga um, tao or individuals with disability. And, yan, they were killed, yung mga um, individuals with disability. They were killed for economic reason and reasons and killed for religious reasons. So, itong irang ito, teachers, very dark siya, no? So, teachers, take note nito. take note po nito. Okay? Era of that is era of extermination. Very dark or very negative nilang perceive yung disability. Okay? Pag may disability ka, halos hindi sila makatao kung kumrato sa sayo. Let's say, for example, sa mga taong may disability. Okay po? Ayan. First time nyo ba tong na-encounter teachers? Yung mga ganitong eras? Okay? That is the first. How about the second one? We also have the era of of ridicule. Yan na, yung, yan na po yung correct answer natin kanina sa ating item number, ano bang item na tayo? Parang number six ba yun? Yes. Number six. Era of ridicule. Yan yung pinagtatawanan or parang ano ba yung word ninyo sa kasi kami sa Bicol parang sinusudo-sudo or minamak. Okay, pag basta alam niyo yung mak. Hindi ko si alam yung Cebuan na term for ano, for mak. Basta basta ano siya, basta alam niyo yung mockery, di ba? Yan, made fun, made fun of. Pinagtatawanan na nila parang hindi nila nila respect yung uh, someone with disability. Uh, and then yan, ginagamit siya parang parang inuuto yung mga uh, yung mga tao or yung mga individuals with disability and then yung iba pinapatay pa din they were uh, still put to death and pina, hin, yung ano naman medyo hinayaan na din naman silang mabuhay pero usually as beggars okay as beggars ayan ayan may bikula na din pala tayo dito si Ma'am Joyce Eh, yan, medyo may mga nakakaintindi naman pala. Pero alam naman niyo teachers, yung mockery, di ba? Mockery and yung pinagtatawanan nga, made fun of. That's easy, easy naman yung mga terms natin dito. Ayan, hello ma'am. <laughs> Kapo Bicolana. Sige. So yan, teachers, they were permitted to live but at, as beggars. So medyo dark pa din or negative pa din yung era of ridicule. But darker yung uh, extermination, era of extermination. Mas malala yun, no? Dito mezo naging light-light na pero still negative pa din yung treatment sa ating mga um, persons with or individuals with disability. How about naman yung era of asylum? Ito naman during naman po to nung Renaissance period. During this time teachers, meron ng pakialam yung Catholic Church. Hindi na siya kasing dark or Uh, yung yung treatment uh, hindi nagkasing dark nung era of extermination and era of ridicule so medyo medyo meron na silang pakialam especially yung Catholic Church sa mga um, persons or individuals with disability or special needs okay so yan and then pero teachers they were still seen as unteachable Although may care na sa kanila, but they were still seen as unteachable. Negative pa din siya. No, siguro hindi pa kasi ganun, pa-open yung mga tao. Pero medyo paunti-unti na no? during this period. Ayan teachers, take note po ng ating mga eras. Para uh, hindi kayo malilito teachers. Okay? Okay, so yan. Nandiyan na tayo sa ating beginning. Okay, ang pagsisimula. Okay, beginning. Ah. Alam mo alam niyo yung pag pag narinig niyo, parang pag narinig niyo yung beginning, parang pagbukas na, parang medyo na medyo ano na to. 
pero parang medyo na, uh, may positive ano na siya no pag pinakinggan nyo yung beginning alam yung medyo positive na siya compared to the three na na-encounter natin na eras okay ito na yung dito na lumabas yung mga pioneers ng special education so first med, 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 meron tayong um tao who educated the deaf from no, noble class okay So, siya po ay si Pedro Ponce de Leon. Siya yung nag-educate sa mga deaf coming from the noble class. So, medyo nagiging ano na, no? ito na yung pag-boom or pag-open ng uh, yung understanding when it comes to special education. Okay, so, yung ano naman, yung pagbukas ng Institute of Deaf, that is, yung tao dyan, very important person dyan ay si Abe Charles Michady. Lepi. Hindi ko alam kung tama yung pronunciation ko, but yeah, yan yung name niya. <laughs> Paki, Paki-take note na lang po, teachers. Baka lumabas yan, no? Hindi kasi natin, hindi naman natin alam kung lalabas yung mga names na yan, but of course, it is important that you master them. Alam nyo sila para kung in case man lumabas yan. Okay, that dahil very important uh, din yung, yung sped sa ating professional education, lahat ng mga tinuturo natin, mahalaga sila. Yan yung itatatak nyo sa isip nyo para kumbaga lahat nyo sila i-consider with equal importance. Okay po? Ayan. Si Abe Charles, Michelle D. Lepi, siya naman yung sa Institute of Deaf. And of course, teacher, siguro kilalang kilala nyo uh, with uh, among these three, yung pinaka familiar siguro sa inyo ay si Luis uh, oh yes, si, si Luis Braille. Okay, yung sa Braille system. Yan naman yung tactile system of reading and writing for the blind. Okay, yan, si Luis Braille. Si Luis Braille yung pinaka-familiar sa atin, no? So, teachers, kindly take note of these people para guided kayo all the time. Okay, sige. So, sila yung mga naging baga, pioneers ng special education without their... Um, initiative, so siguro hindi magiging ganito kalawak yung understanding natin with special education, hindi tayo abot uh, sa punto na, yes, nagiging inclusive na ngayong education natin. So, thank you sa mga taong to na nag-open or naging kumaga foundation ng special education. Okay? Mga founders ng special education. Okay, so tapos na ba teachers? Na take note niyo na ba yung lahat ng eras and yung mga special or mga uh, mahahalagang tao? Kindly take uh, or chat po sa ating chat box kung okay na po sila. So, okay, so siguro yung iba um, medyo bago para sa inyo, pero at least ngayon pa lang teachers, alam niyo na kung ano yung mga uh, yung mga importanteng konsepto na kailangan yung pag-aralan. All right, very good. Let's move forward. Thank you, teachers. Number seven, this law recognizes the need for inclusiveness of education and stipulates the implementation of programs aiming to address the needs of all learners. What do we call this law? Is it A, MTBLE, letter B, Kindergarten Education Act, letter C, Republic Act of 1425, letter D, Enhanced Basic Education Act of 2013. Sige nga po. Law. So it means, kailangan alam nyo din po yung mga laws. For SPED and uh, Inclusive Education. Okay, so sa ating chat box, okay, let me see kung ano yung mga sagot natin mga teachers. Alright, sa mga nasa live stream, congratulations kapag nakakakuha ng correct answer. And kung hindi man, again, that is okay, teachers. Hindi po tayo, uh, kumbaga hindi sumama yung loob natin dapat kapag nagkamali tayo, no? But instead, uh, make, make that as a motivation na hindi na kayo magkakamali on or the next, uh, kumbaga, next time na sasagutan nyo yun, or in the actual let, hindi na kayo magkakamali. Okay? So, yung sagot ng ating mga teachers ay letter D. Si Ma'am Aileen, si Ma'am Jaira, si Ma'am Marilyn, 
Okay, letter D daw. Same with Ma'am Jephine. Okay, sige. I think this question is also easy for, for you teachers. Yeah? Okay, so teachers, dito sa question na to, matatanggal niyo agad si a Republic Act 1425. It has nothing to do with the question naman. Although this is an act, pero ito yung sa Rizal, di ba? Rizal Act naman ito, or Rizal Law. Yung 1425. Okay, so yung MTBLE naman, wala naman dyan uh, related to mother tongue. Okay, so hindi din siya. And si kindergarten naman, may itatanggal nyo din siya or cross out agad dahil hindi din naman siya yung hinahanap natin. So yung hinihingi dito po teachers, based on the question, again, understand nyo po yung, yung or intindihin nyo po masyado yung tanong. Okay, this law recognizes the need for inclusiveness of education and stipulates the implementation of programs aiming to address the needs of all learners. So, kindly take note of the teachers. That is none other than letter D, Enhanced Basic Education Act of 2013. Okay, very good. Sa mga nakakuha ng correct answer, let's further discuss this item. All right, sige. Uh, Pag-usapan naman natin yung mga education uh, for exceptionals the legal and the legal basis. Okay? So yan, nagsimula, nagsimula yan sa Enhanced Basic Education Act of 2013. Okay? Meron tayong, or, um, meron tayong Enhanced Basic Education Act of 2013. That is a program to address needs of all learners. Okay? Kagaya, kagaya nga po nung nasa nasa tanong kanina. So that is Enhanced Basic Education Act of 2013. Please uh, master that teachers. Okay po? And we also have the Depth and Order 21 series or yeah, sec series of 2019 ba? Yan. Yan po teachers yung K-12 Basic Education Program na yung ini-empower niya or uh, ini-aim niya din is yung inclusion. Okay, that is Dep Ed Order 21 uh, series of 2019. Okay, so how about yung Senate Bill 12, 1298 naman? Yan naman yung free public education. So uh, those are um, legal basis, important legal basis for our special education and inclusive education. So kindly take note of uh, these legal basis for teachers. Okay, sige. How about number eight? The following are intellectual characteristics of gifted learners, except, except letter A, excited to see a new toy, letter B, being keen to details, letter C, always curious, letter D, having the, having the capacity to reflect deeply. Sige po. Okay, ano kaya yung... Um, Except John. Okay. Use your metacognition to answer this question. Okay. All right. So teachers, yung yung sagot nyo ay letter A. How about the others? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yan, letter A mostly yung sagot. Let's see kung tama ang sagot nyo. Okay, very good. So, the following are intellectual. So, yung being keen to details, always curious, having the capacity to reflect deeply. They are all, ano, they are all um, characteristics, intellectual characteristics of gifted learners, except, okay, yung hinihingi is yung except, excited to see a new toy. Okay, yung guide niyo dyan is yung intellectual. Okay, pag alam niyo yung intellectual, then it would be easier for you to find the answer sa particular question na ito. Okay, sige. So, letter A po yung correct answer. Okay, number nine. Very good teachers who got the correct answer from our chat and live stream. 
Number nine, the most common impairments that may cause sensory disabilities are letter A, speech and language impairments, letter B, vision and hearing impairments, letter C, emotional and behavioral impairments, letter D, cognitive and learning impairments. Yeah. Ano kaya yung sagot dito natin mga teachers? Sensory. Okay, from the word sensory. Sense. Okay. Sensory. Okay, teachers, mahalagang mahanap niyo yung mga clue terms or yung mga context clues so that it would be easier for you to answer the question. Ayan. Teachers, most of your answer naman sa ating chat box. Okay, and sa ating ding atang live stream. So, letter B po yung nakikita ko. Okay, Ma'am Jaira. Ma'am Marilyn, Ma'am Jephine, Ma'am Eileen, Sir Arnel, letter C. Let's see kung ano yung correct answer. Ayan, let's, uh, let's reveal the answer. Okay, from the word sensory teachers, of course, that is vision and hearing impairments. Okay? So, yan yung mga, yung mga context clues natin, teachers. You have to use them para kung hindi kayo familiar with the uh, question, okay, alam nyo pa din. Kasi, baga, meron kayong mga context clues. Alam nyo naman yung meaning ng sense, di ba? Senses, sensory. So, yung pag nakita nyo yung vision and hearing, then, mapi mapipili nyo siya as the correct answer. Okay? Let's further discuss this one. Speech, uh, ayan. Una tayo sa ating speech and language impairments. Para alam nyo din yung iba, hindi lang yung uh, vision and hearing. So, yung iba din, alam nyo din dapat sila. So, pag sinabi nating speech and language impairments, ito yung condition in which a person has problems creating or forming the, the speech sounds needed to communicate with others. Kaya nga speech and language, nahihirapan sa pag- create ng speech sound para makapag-communicate sa ibang tao. Okay? So, very, uh, ano tawag nito? Very, you may, under, uh, parang literal siya, di ba? Speech and language impairments. Madaling maintindihan. Yun naman pong emotional and behavioral impairments, specific mental health disorders that cause naman extreme difficulties with both emotions and behavior. So, yung mga examples po nito, ng emotional and behavioral impairments, yun yung autism and mental retardation. Ano naman yung teachers yung sinasabi nating um, autism and mental retardation? Pag sinabi pong autism, that is impaired social interaction and communication. So meron dyang mga repetitive actions, yung bata o yung individual, and uh, ASD, alam niya, uh, autism spectrum disorder or the wide spectrum. So, yan yung autism. Okay po? Yan yung, uh, yan yung repetitive actions ng isang individual. That is one of the parang makikita nyo sa isang uh, ch uh, child with autism. Okay? Child with autism. So, impaired din yung social interaction and communication niya. Pag sinabi naman po nating mental retardation, Merong intellectual difficulty yung isang individual and yung aver, uh, yung kumaga intelligence niya uh, sub average yung intelligence and deficits then in behavior. So yung intelligence nasa 70 and below. Pag 70 and below ibig sabihin yung individual ay merong mental retardation. Okay po? So kindly take note of these teachers. Uh isa din to sa mga kumaga Sa, sa ngalin ng special education, uh, ito yung mga kumbaga, mahalagang konsepto din na lagi yung may encounter. Okay po? Okay, so let's go with cognitive and learning impairments naman. We have, 
first, the Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder or ADHD. Ito naman yung difficulty in focus and merong recurrent hyper uh, hyperactive and impulsive behavior. Yung isang tao or isang bata. Okay? Yung ADHD, laging hyper. Yung isang, yung isang, yung behavior niya, okay, may hyperactivity and impulsivity. Recurrent siya. Okay po, that is ADHD. And then naman, teachers, we also have the learning disabilities. Ito, lagi nyo din tong na-encounter and I, I, I hope na most of you know this uh, concepts. We have the dyslexia. So pag dyslexia po, yung isang individual ay nahihirapan in terms of reading. Okay? Dyslexia, that is for uh, difficulty in reading. Pag dysgraphia naman, pag nahihirapan ka naman sa pagsulat, pagsusulat, that is, that is good dysgraph, dysgraphia or dysgraphia. Okay? Difficulty in writing. Pag arithmetic naman or numbers, nahihirapan ka sa arithmetic or okay, numerical yung mga operations. Pero ba, huwag nyo namang i-diagnose yung sarili nyo kapag, <laughs> kapag mahina kayo sa math. Baka sabihin nyo, ano, may dyscalculia siguro ako kasi mahina ako sa mathematics or when it comes to numbers. So, huwag nyo i-diagnose yung sarili nyo, teachers. Okay? Yan, dyscalculia, dyscalculia that is difficulty in terms of arithmetic. Pag dyspraxia naman po, okay, dyspraxia, difficulty naman when it comes to psychomotor. Okay po, pakitake note of these concepts. Very important. Same with the other, all of these concepts are important. So, pakitake note po, teachers. Okay, tapos na ba ang ating teachers na mag-take note? I hope na madali lang naman maintindihan yung mga concepts na to, no? Balikan ulit ninyo, teachers, after nyo or after ng session natin, maybe tomorrow. Lagi nyo lang siyang um, basahin and intindihin nyo siya, teachers. Kasi when you take it by heart, uh, madali nyo siyang maiintindihan kapag nasa actualet na. Okay po? Okay. Sige, move forward tayo. Yan. Pag pag speech and communication disorder naman, okay, different in terms of speaking the language. Meron tayong tinatawag teachers na dysartria. Nakukuha yan because of injury, nagkakaroon ng slurred speech. Okay, slurred slurred speech parang uh, parang mahina yung pagsasalita. Okay, parang hindi maintindihan. Okay, slurred speech. And then meron tayong aphasia nakukuha din yan because of injury. Yan, loss of speech talaga. Nawawala, hindi hindi na nakakapagsalita. And then yung mutism naman hindi nakakapagsalita because of um merong problema sa muscle muscles uh, sa vocal tract. Okay? Mamaya mas maiintindihan niyo yung mutism. I'll give you an example situation. Let's see if makukuha niyo yung correct answer doon. Pero meron dong mutism. Okay po? Sige. Paki-take note ng teachers. Paki-chat nga po teachers sa ating chat box or sa ating comment section if you got uh, you got all this inform information na. Na-take note nyo na po sila. And clear na ba po sila? Okay. Para alam ko din yung pacing nyo. Okay po? Some of you might, uh, might be wondering ko ano yung mga yung mga terms na ito or baka kasi nakalimutan na pero magandang ni-review natin po siya okay very good teachers continue na tayo ayan meron din tayong sensory impairments ayan na yung sinasabi natin teachers kanina meron tayong visual impairments kagaya ng yung nearsightedness so meron siguro sa atin dito ang mga nearsighted mas malinaw kapag mas malapit, no? Or tinatawag din natin siyang myopia. Okay, that is another visual impairment, nearsightedness. Farsightedness naman or, or hyperopia kapag mas malinaw, mas malinaw mo siyang nakikita kung malayo. Okay, that is farsightedness. Pag presbyopia naman, that is the trouble reading small points. 
Okay? Presbyopia. Trouble reading, small points. And yung astigmatism naman, yan yung cornea damage, common eye problem siya that can make your vis uh, vision blurry or distorted. Okay, baka may mga ganito sa inyo or na-diagnose kayo ng doctor niyo with astigmatism. Okay, baka may mga nakaka-relate. Kasi hindi na, mga common kasi to eh, visual impairments. No? And yung tunnel vision naman po, that is the central vision. Yun yung, yung central vision ay mas, mas mali. Kung baga, pag, pag, pag inikot, inikot mo yung ano mo, tumingin ka sa side, hindi, hindi siya clear. No? Pero, clear siya on the center. Pag sa is, pag isang direction ka lang, like a tube, no? Kaya nga tinatawag siyang like a tube kasi tunnel vision. Tunnel vision. Straight, straight, straight ka lang titingin. Then, syempre, pag straight lang, central vision mo yan. So, malinaw siya. But, kapag, uh, parang, tawag nito, minove mo yung eye, uh, yung ano mo, eyeball mo, tawag ba, eyeball ata. Basta, pag tumingin ka sa side, di ba, ganyan, ganyan. Hindi siya hindi siya clear. Ganyan yung ganyan yung tunnel vision. Clear lang siya kapag straight central vision lang. Okay po. So I hope na clear po siya sa inyong sa inyong mga teacher. Okay? Yan yung sensory impairments. Now, let's go to item number 10. Through education, we promote blank. Is it letter A, literacy? Is it letter B? Personal autonomy. Ano? Letter B, personal autonomy. Letter C, economic self-sufficiency. Letter D, all of the above. Okay, let's see kung ano yung sagot natin mga teachers. This is an easy question din, teachers. I hope na madali nyo tong masagotan. Ayan, teachers, dahil madali lang itong masagotan, okay? Okay, teachers, the correct answer for this item is letter D. Ayan, may mga pumili ng letter A. We promote, aha, uh, literacy lang po ba yung pinopromote natin, teachers, sa education? Okay, pwede, teachers. Of course, that is the primary, no? Literacy. But, Hindi lang kasi yan yung makikita nyo sa option. So, nakita nyo din si personal autonomy or pag sinabi nating personal autonomy, meron kang independence. Yan, meron din economic self-sufficiency. Okay? So, pag nakita nyo yan, teachers, halos tama naman lahat, di ba? A, B, and C, they are all correct. Then, may all of the above tayo. Of course, the answer would be letter B. Okay? Nalin lang ba kayo ng uh, literacy? Of course, tama yung literacy, but hindi lang na hindi lang nag-iisa si literacy. But we also have letter B and D. I mean, letter B and C, which are also correct answer. Okay? So, A, B, and C, that is all of the above. Kaya yung tamang sagot ay letter B. Ayan. Nalin lang ang ating mga teachers. That is fine. <laughs> Okay. Sige, teachers, move forward tayo. Ayan, yung mga gustong mag-avail ng ating LCTC books, available po siya sa Shopee Store, LCTC Review Center. Makikita nyo na po dyan yung mga iba't ibang books na in-offer ng ating review, ng ating LCTC Review Center. And meron nga din tayo dyan, teachers, let answer sheet, which you may also purchase. Okay? So just... Don't hesitate to visit our LCTC Review Center sa Shopee. Okay, sige. Item number 11. The services designed to assist students with disabilities in moving from living at home and attending school to independent living, employment, and community involvement is called letter A, progression, letter B, promotion, letter C, Termination, letter D, transition. Sige nga po. Ano kaya yung tamang sagot dito? Okay.
Okay. Ano kaya yung sagot nating mga teachers? Ayan. Mukhang nagkakamali na naman ang ating mga teachers. <laughs> okay. Tingnan po natin yung ating mga context clues. Moving from living at home and attending school to independent living. I'll give you chance to change your answer. Ano kaya yung tamang sagot dito? Progression ba? Okay, may nakikita na akong correct answer. Very good. Yan, sa mga nagpalit dahil na-realize nilang mali sila. <laughs> Yan, ang tamang sagot ay letter letter D, transition. Kaya nga moving, di ba? Moving from living at home and attending school to independent living. Yan, lagi yung may context clue teacher. Kaya dapat hahanapin nyo yan kung hindi nyo alam yung tamang sagot. Okay? And intindihin nyo maigi yung inihingi para makuha nyo yung correct answer. Okay, very good sa mga nakakuha ng correct answer which is letter D, transition. Item number 12. The following are non-intellectual characteristics of gifted learners except letter A, becoming or becoming compulsive collector. Letter B, thinking analytically. Letter C, being argumentative. Letter D, tending to have tunnel, uh, tunnel vision. Non-intellectual characteristics of gifted learners, except aning except dyan? Non-intellectual. Except. Yung except po yung hahanapin nyo. Okay, I'll give you time to, I, I mean, I'll give you chance to change your answer sa mga sumagot na ng letter D. That is not funnel vision, teachers. Except. Uh -huh. Medyo nahihirapan ang ating teachers dito. Anin kaya dyan yung, hanapin nyo teachers para hindi kayo ma mahirapan. Hanapin nyo po yung, anin dyan yung intellectual. Kasi yung hinihingi baga po, uh, is, yung hinihingi po dyan is yung except. So, ibig sabihin, mga non-intellectual yung tatlo dyan, pero may isang hindi. Alin, alin ba dyan yung intellectual characteristic ng gifted learners? Okay. Walang nakakakuha ng correct answer. Teachers, tingnan nyo. Sige nga, naubos na yung choices. Lahat na nasagot, kaya syempre, doon tayo sa, sa hindi pa nasasagot. Thinking analytically teachers, that is an intellectual characteristic of gifted learners. Okay po? So, walang ibang tamang sagot ay letter B. That is letter B. Thinking analytically. Kasi yung hinihingi nga po is yung exact. Okay? So, yan. Mga non-intellectual. Yan yung mga non-intellectual na sinasabi dyan. But, thinking analytically, that is intellectual characteristic of a gifted learners. Okay? I hope it's clear now. Okay? Pakikurot ng sarili kong nagkakamali para hindi na ulitin. Okay? Let's move forward. Still, congratulations to those who got the correct answer. Okay po. Yeah, number 13. Most of the labels used to identify and categorize students for special education services blank. Letter A, help peers to understand and accept Students, diversities. Letter B, prevent those students from going through the response to intervention process. Letter C, allow teachers to move those students out of the regular education classroom. Letter D, have positive connotations. Yan yung mga labels daw. Na nag identify and categorize sa mga students for special education services. Ano ba sila? Ano ba yung ano ba yung ano nila? Parang importance. Okay. Okay, look again teachers. Ano yung uh, ano ano yung paulit-ulit kong ni-remind sa inyo when answering prof ed and general education, especially most especially prof ed. 
hanapin niyo yung pinaka-ideal na sagot. Okay? Yung pinaka-ideal na sagot. Kasi idealistic tayo pagdating sa prof professional education. Hinahanap natin yung mga ideal, um, yung mga ideal behaviors, attitudes ng ating teachers, ng ating learners. Ano ba yung mga ideal? Okay? And yung mabait na sagot din teachers, no? Yung mabait na sagot. Maliban diyan dapat alam niyo din, alam na alam niyo talaga yung konseptong hinihingi. Okay? And dapat learner centered. Okay, learner centered. Yan yung mga guides niyo for you to be able to get the correct answer sa actual let. Kabisa doon yung PPST kasi nandoon yung mga values ng teachers, ano yung ginagawa ng teachers. Okay? Ayan teachers, nakuha na yung correct answer. Very good sa mga po, nagpalit at na-realize na tama, uh, hindi, I mean, mali yung unang sagot, pero ngayon, correct na. That is letter A. Of course, most of the labels used to identify and categorize students for special education services help peers to understand and accept students' diversities. Okay, yan yung pinaka-ideal. Yan yung pinaka-learner center na sagot. Yan yung Okay, pinaka, although mga mabait naman na sagot yung mga nasa options natin, pero yung A yung pinaka ideal. At yan talaga yung perfect na sagot kasi alam nyo, okay, naintindihan nyo yung hinihingi sa question. Okay, let's proceed. Number 14, modifications of curriculum, materials, and or instructional methods often are needed to blank. Letter A, Allow parents to assist their children with homework assignments. Letter B, ensure that all students meet the standards of the general education curriculum. Letter C, allow students with significant disabilities to access the general education curriculum and classroom. Letter D, to meet the needs of students who are culturally or culturally diverse. Okay. Ano yung pinakahinihingi dyan? Bakit kaya minabodify natin yung curriculum, yung mga materials, yung mga instructional methods? Bakit po? Bakit natin yung ginagawa? Okay. Again, teachers, kapag, di ba, halos, halos tama kasi lahat, no? But, uh, pag gina, parang pag, pag sinamarize nyo ba yan, ano, ano ba yung, ano ba yung pwede, pwedeng sagot dyan? <coughs> kasi halos, kapag isamarize nyo na yung mga options na yan, ano, ano kaya yung lalabas? Kasi they were all correct, okay? Again, yung subject natin dito ay um, special education and inclusive education. Okay, baka mabigla yung ating mga teacher sa correct answer. Yan, yung iba nakuha naman yung correct answer. That is none other than letter C. We modify okay, the modification of curriculum, materials, and or instructional methods often are needed to allow students with significant disabilities to access the general education curriculum and classroom. Okay? So, kaya nga sabi ko, teachers, um, aside from knowing, di ba kasi halos tama yung lahat ng mga options, you also know kung paano si, uh, si questions or yung mga options is to summarize. No? Let's say, for example, sa ganitong tanong, halos nasa letter C na siya. Parang general na. Okay? Yung mga A, A B, N, D kasi specifics pa lang sila pero kapag generalize mo siya yung lahat ng yung A B and D nakapaloob na siya sa letter D I mean nasa letter C okay so yung correct answer ay letter C 
Okay, to those who got the correct answer, congratulations. Sa mga hindi, okay lang yan. Uh, next time, hindi na tayo magkakamali. Okay po. Move forward. Number 15. The intent of this federal statute is to improve the academic achievement of all students and to close the achievement gap between disadvantaged and minority students and their peers. So ano yung hinihingi dito? Ano siya? Is that idea? Letter B, FERPA, F-E-R-P-A, letter C, A-D-A, letter D, N-C-L-B. Okay, dapat pala alam nyo, alam nyo din yung mga to, no? Usually sa let, ibibigay lang nila yan, teachers, yung mga ganyang um, acronym. Okay, without you knowing ano ba sila. Pero dapat, kaya nga teachers, ginagawa natin itong review so that you get the knowledge kung ano ba itong mga bagay na ito na hindi nyo pa alam or baga nire-refresh sa, sa isip nyo kung ano ba, ano nga ba ulit itong mga uh, mga concepts na to na you encountered already during your college years. Pero dahil medyo matagal-tagal na, nagkakaroon tayo ng memory gap, i-review ulit natin siya. Okay? So, ano ba yung mga sagot ninyo, teachers? Kindly lay your answer on our chat box. Ayan. Okay, reveal ko na yung tamang sagot, teachers, no? Okay. Huwag matakot sumagot, teachers. I encourage you to actively participate sa ating chat box pa din. Ayan, yung tamang sagot ay letter B. NCLB. Ano kaya yung NCLB? Okay, you might be wondering kasi kung ano yung mga to na napaka-importante sa special education. Pag sinabi natin, teachers, yung idea, ayan, si idea, very popular yan when it comes to um, special education. Yan yung isa sa uh, mga acronym na laging yung ma-encounter. Meron tayong Individuals with Disabilities Education Act. Ano naman kaya si Si NCLB, no? Walang iba kundi si No Child Left Behind. Okay, that is also an act. No Child no child Left Behind. And yan yung correct answer natin. That is to improve academic achievement of all students and to close the achievement gap between disadvantaged and minority students and their peers. That is NCLB. Let's further discuss them, teachers, para uh, meron kayong uh, thorough understanding about these acronyms and concepts. Pag sinabi natin Family Education Rights and Privacy Act, which is FERPA or F-E-R-P-A teachers, that is a federal law that protects the privacy, okay, the privacy of student education records. Okay, protects the privacy of education uh, of students' education records. So kindly take note of these teachers. And si IDEA naman or si Individuals with Disability Education Act, that is a law make, that makes available a free appropriate public education to eligible children with disabilities throughout the nation and ensures special education and related services to those children. Okay, That is IDEA or Individuals with Disabilities Education Act. Okay, so paki-take note teachers kasi alam kong yung iba sa inyo hindi familiar or hindi nila hindi pa master tong mga to. Okay. Sige. Then of course, we also have Sorry. Okay. Yan yung ADA naman teachers, yan naman yung tinatawag nating Americans with Disabilities Act. Okay, that is the civil rights law naman sa America that prohibits um, discrimination against individuals with disabilities in all areas of public life, including jobs, schools, transportation, and all public and private places that are open to general public. Okay, that is ADA, Americans with Disabilities Act. Ayan. So I hope na tinitake note niyo yung teachers, no? Pwede nyo naman atang mabalikan tong video or yung live stream natin in case may na-miss kayo. Pero as much as possible, take note kayo habang nakikinig 
no para mas active yung learning number 16 local school districts must operate their special education programs according to letter a the regulations established at the state and federal levels letter b the guidelines established by school principals and district superintendents letter c what is appropriate for the students in their local district letter d the guidelines established by the state governor okay again look for the most ideal answer aside from you knowing the correct answer no Ayan. Nasa na yung mga teachers natin sa ating chat box? Okay, please. Uh, teachers, try your best. If nagkakamali man po tayo, teachers, that is okay. At least ngayon pa lang nagkakamali tayo dito sa ating review. At hindi na natin yun uulitin on the day of the let. Okay, or the actual let. Ayan, may nakikita na akong mga sagot. Okay, sa ating mga teachers naman sa live stream, itap niyo yung shoulders niyo kapag nakakakuha din kayo ng correct answer. Ayan, teachers, nakikita ko may letter A dito. Let's see kung ano yung tamang sagot. May letter B din. Okay, so local school districts must operate their special education programs according to Letter A, the regulations established at the state and federal levels. Okay? Sige. Hindi siya letter B. Hindi siya letter D. Okay, the answer is letter A. Okay, let's proceed. Ayan. Ito, teachers, mag-compute kayo dito ha. Tignan natin kung makukuha niyo yung correct answer. Sabi dito sa item number 17, Jamie's mental age is 8 and his chronological age is 10. Okay, yung chronological age, that is also the same with the physical age. So, you are uh, you are going to compute for Jamie's IQ score. Okay, using the, uh, the formula below. Okay, yan. IQ is equal to mental age divided by physical age or chronological age times 100. Sige nga po. Tingnan natin. Ngayon pa lang itry nyo na teachers. Mal may mga ano, may mga computations po sa, may mga ganditong computations sa actual let that you might encounter. So at least ngayon pa lang, tinatry nyo na po siya. Okay. Tingnan ko kung sino ang mga nag-compute. Pag nag-compute kayo, syempre, tama yung sagot nyo. Okay, very good. I think uh, most of you naman got the correct answer. Because of course, nag-compute kayo using our uh, formula below. Okay, so none other than the answer is letter... Um, yes, the answer is letter C. Letter C, which is 80. So, sa mga nag-compute, very good. Ibig sabihin, alam na alam na kung paano mag-compute. And teachers, madali lang naman i-memorize yung um, tawag dito, uh, yung formula for IQ, for getting the IQ. That is mental age over physical age times 100. Then you'll get the the IQ score. Okay? Sige. Very good. Number 18. On learning deficiencies, what is known as a learning disability in reading? Ayan. Is it dyslexia? B. Dyscalculia? C. Dyscapia? Letter D. Dyspersia? Ayan. Ang bibilis sumagot nating teachers kasi alam na alam nila to. <laughs> okay. Very good. Makikita ko. Most of you got the correct answer which is letter A. Dyslexia. Ayan. Si dyscalculia nahihirapan kayo sa arithmetic, si dysgraphia naman kapag nahihirapan kayong magsulat or in writing, difficulty in writing. Si dispersia, ano lang yan dyan? Um, destructor. <laughs> Wala yung ano, ganap dyan si dispersia. Okay po, very good. Most of you got the correct answer. Let's move forward. 
Ayan, no, teachers, i-remind ko lang kayo ng pagkakaiba ng dyslexia, dysgraphia, dyscalculia, and dyspraxia. Yan si dyspraxia, yun yung psychomotor. Okay? Number 19. Leia has ADHD and is always observed by her, by her teacher to be fidgeting and restless in class ang likot-likot which symptoms which symptoms is being described by the teacher letter a impulsivity letter b inattention letter c hyperactivity letter d learning disability okay okay so nakikita ko most of your answer, letter C. Okay, very good. I think alam na alam na ng ating mga teachers to. Kasi kanina may lecture na tayo nito no? or discussion na tayo regarding this. Kaya nagiging easy na lang sa inyo yung pagsagot. Okay. Si ADHD, yung bata daw or si Leia, fidgeting and restless in class. So pag nabasa mo pa lang yung fidgeting and restless in class, Okay, magpa-pop up na agad sa isip mo na, okay, that is hyperactivity. Okay, so letter C po yung correct answer. Very good, teachers. Yan. Di ba kapag alam niyo yung konsepto, ang dali lang sagutin. Kaya, teachers, i-review nyo yung mga tinuturo natin every time na may lecture po tayo. Ang daming, ang daming mga, di ba, mga additional information. Para hindi lang naman tayo sumasagot ng mga ganitong questions. But of course, naiintindihan nyo kung ano bang ganap ng ibang mga, uh, yung mga choices. Diba? Yung mga choices, yung mga nasa choices. Kasi, of course, importante din sila. Yan. Pag sinabing attention deficit hyperactivity disorder or ADHD, that is your, the difficulty and focus and yung recurrent hyperactive and impulsive behavior. Okay. Number 20, a student's individualized education plan must indicate letter A. Uh, no, a student's individualized education plan must indicate blank. Is it A, how progress will be measured? Is it B, when progress, when progress will be measured? Letter C, by whom progress will be measured? Letter D, all of the above. All right. Let's see. Ano kaya ang mga sagot niyo? All right. Sige. Sige. Ayan. Mukhang na-apply na naman ang ating mga teachers, ang mga techniques. Siguro kasi dahil one week, no? I was one week din tayong hindi nagkita. Kaya medyo, medyo merong gap. Pero ngayon, medyo na, ano na ulit. Nagagamit na yung mga strategies sa pagsagot, and of course, yung knowledge nyo on the concepts. Very good. I think most of you got the correct or the correct answer. Okay? So, letter D. So, pag sinabing um, uh, students' individualized education plan, does, that must indicate all these three, how progress will be measured, when progress will be measured, and by whom progress will be measured. Okay, that is letter D, all of the above. Okay, sige, yung mga gusto pong mag-avail again ng ating book, available sa ating LCTC Review Center. Okay, sa store yan po, sa Shopee. You may avail of the Gen Ed, Prof, Prof Ed, or iba't ibang major shift po yung available dito. So you may, you may try to avail one for you para uh, ma-aid kayo or as aid nyo din in preparation for the upcoming September let. Okay, sige po. Mas may mga may mga drills po dyan that you may use to practice po sa pagsagot ng mga questions. Okay? Let's move forward. Number 21. Vision and hearing screenings are conducted to determine if a student blank. Letter A, can access learning materials. Letter B, has color blindness. Letter C has, per has perfect speech. Letter D has an attention deficit disorder. Okay. Um, again, use our techniques in answering. And alam kong alam nyo to. Yung naintindihan nyo naman yung, uh, yung tanong. So, 
aside from that, to make sure, you may also use our techniques. Ayan. Okay, how about the other teachers? Okay. Ah, all right. Okay, most of your answer is letter A. Can access learning material. So, the correct answer for this is letter A as well. Vision and hearing screenings are conducted to determine if a student can access learning material. Siyempre, vision and hearing, di ba? Very important yan. So that you will uh, know kung si student ba is ma-access yung learning materials or baka hindi yun yung, uh, hindi yun yung need niya. Okay? So dapat alam din natin yung mga gantong questions. Okay? Sige. Very good. I think most of you got it right naman. And to those na nasa live stream po natin who got the correct answer, congratulations to Okay? Number 22. When the professionals providing information in a consultation shift from an expert model of interaction to a model of joint problem solving, the interaction is viewed as blank. Letter A, collaborative. Letter B, a student approach. Letter B, or letter C, interactive. Letter D, counterproductive. Okay, sige nga. Mm -hmm. okay. Joint problem solving. Pag sinabi natin joint problem solving, mag-isa lang ba dyan, si student? Joint. Again, teachers, look at the context clues. So yan, nilalagyan ko po, po siya dyan ng context clues. However, on the actual let, kayo yung hahanap ng context clues. What if na miss out nyo si joint problem solving? Kaya, teachers, importanteng nahanap nyo yung mga context clues para guided kayo on answering. Okay? Kasi madali nyo yung nasasagot pag, naka, pag nakikita nyo kung ano ba yung hinahanap. And matutulungan kayo niyan pag nahanap nyo yung context clues. Okay, sige. Ayan. Very good. Nakita na ng ating teachers ang correct answer. Yan, sabi ni Ma'am Jaira, collaboration, same with, ma with Ma'am Marites, Ma'am Jacqueline, Sir Arnel, Ma'am Aileen. Ayan, very good po. Dahil ang tamang sagot dyan ay, ayan, collaborative. The interaction is viewed or viewed as collaborative. Kasi nga, teachers, join. ba? Pag join, hindi lang isa. Sama-sama, okay, in solving the problem. Kaya teachers, again, hanapin nyo yung context clues for you to be able to get or to get the correct answer. Okay, para hindi kayo malito. Ayan. Very good. Item number 23. Being a member of an effective interdisciplinary team requires blank. Ayan. Si effective disciplinary team ang uh, Ang pagiging member daw ng inter or ng effective interdisciplinary team, ano daw yung kailangan? Is it A, listening, preparation, and advocating for the student based on your area of expertise? Letter B, um, listening, power, and paraphrasing. Letter C, paraphrasing, power, and preparation. D, listening, paraphrasing, and flexibility and meeting times. Again, what is the most ideal answer for this? Ano yung ideal answer na dapat nating mahanap? Kasi halos pare-pares, ba? Pero ano ba yung pinakasakto, pinakaswak na sagot base sa hinahanap dyan sa question? In effective interdisciplinary. Okay, so may A tayo, may D, may A, may A. And may D tayo. Pwede naman kasi talaga si D, no? Pag nakita mo si D, malilin lang ka ni D. <laughs> malilin lang ka ni D. <laughs> Pero hindi yan yung sagot si D. I mean, hindi sagot si D. Okay? Pero tama siya, di ba? Tama siya pag pinakinggan mo, pag nakita mo. Halos tama naman kasi lahat. Pero anin ba dyan yung pinakasakto, yung pinakaswak na sagot? That is letter... Okay, ayan. Ang daming nakakuha ng correct answer. 
Very good, teachers. Yan. Move forward. Item number 24. The following can be seen as an option to promote communication between home and school. Is it letter A, encouraging family members to observe or participate in their child's classroom events? Letter B, notebooks that are exchanged between home and school on a daily or weekly basis. Letter C, computer-based computer systems and email. Letter D, all of the above. Ayan, baka ano. Ayan, ayan, sige. Tingnan natin kung tama yung sagot natin mga teachers. Minsan, no, pag sumasagot kayo, ano kaya, tama kaya yung sagot ko, or baka mali, mali, mali. <laughs> Di ba, parang worried din kayo sa, ano kaya yung lalabas na tamang sagot. Ayan. Pero, pero siyempre dahil, again, na-apply nyo naman yung ating mga techniques and yung knowledge nyo, okay, naiintindihan nyo yung, yung hinihingi, nahahanap nyo na din yung correct answer. So, A, encouraging family members to observe or participate in their child's classroom events. That is correct, di ba? Yung computer-based systems and email. That is also correct, di ba? Remote communication between home and school. Yung notebooks that are exchanged between home and school on a daily or weekly basis. That is also correct, di ba? So, none other than yung sagot dyan ay letter Letter D. Very good. I think most of you got the correct answer. Okay. Ayan. Letter D po ang tamang sagot. Congratulations sa mga nakakakuha ng correct answer. Number 24. Which of the following is not an important strategy for creating effective interactions between teachers and parents? Is it letter A, be positive? Letter B, be polite? Letter C, be powerful. Letter D, be proactive. Nalilito na naman yung ating mga teachers kasi halos tama, no? Which of the following is not? Yung not yung hinihingi natin. Or yung hinihingi sa atin ng, ng tanong. Okay. Ano kaya yung pinaka-correct answer dyan? Okay, sabi ni Ma'am Marilyn, letter C. Same with Ma'am Eileen, Sir Arnel, Ma'am Joyce. Okay, si Ma'am, ah, si Ma'am, ano ba, letter D? Ah, okay, kanina pa pala ito. Okay, sige, most of your answers ay letter C. Okay, tingnan natin if you got it correct. Yan, palakpakan ng sarili kung tama yung sagot nyo. Okay, letter C is the correct answer. Congratulations po, teachers. Yan, letter C po ang tamang sagot. Be powerful. Okay? Parang may ano, although positive kasi yung powerful, pero may side siya na medyo negative. No? Parang may too, medyo too much yung powerful as a word. Okay, number 25. Encouragement is more effective than praise with others because blank. Encouragement is more effective than praise with others because A. It recognizes effort and not evaluative of a product. Letter B. It does not facilitate intrinsic motivation. Letter C. It is not concerned with potential and Word of the person. Letter D, none of the above. Sige nga. Mas effective daw si encouragement. Bakit daw ba? Hindi ba nagpa-facilitate ng intrinsic motivation si encouragement? Mm -hmm. It does, diba? Sige nga, tingnan ko nga yung sagot natin mga teachers. Okay, most of you D. But the answer is not D, teacher. Sige nga, piliin nyo nga yung correct answer. Okay, intindihin yung sagot. I mean, yung tanong. 
para mahanap yung sagot. Okay, sige. I think most of you got it correct. Aha, yung mga bagong sagot nyo. Ayan, may... Okay. About yung iba. Okay. Okay, teacher's encouragement. Okay, encouragement. Tapat alam niyo yung ano ba yung encouragement? You are encouraging. Kunyari, sinabi yung you are encouraging the person. Let's say for example, nag nagfail yung bata, 'di ba? Nagfail siya. Instead of kumbaga, uh, i-discourage mo siya or pagsasalitaan mo siya ng mga offensive words, i-encourage mo siya. So pag sinabi mong ini-encourage mo siya, kahit nagfail siya, you are still what? You are still recognizing the effort of the child or the or the or the learner, 'di ba? You are still recognizing the effort. So sabi daw mas mas effective daw yung encouragement rather than praise because what? Because letter A, it recognizes effort and is not evaluative of a product. Okay? Instead of looking, alam mo 'yon, yung looking or Focusing sa kung ano yung ginawa niya. Kasi minsan, nauuna tayong i-criticize natin yung ginawa ng bata. Like, this is not enough. This is not uh, yung, yung ginawa niyang uh, kumbaga project. Hindi siya enough. Yung im imbis na yun, yun yung po-focus na natin, mas maganda na encourage natin yung, yung bata. We, we recognize the effort. Para the next time, mas magiging motivated, mas maibibigay yung, yung best no nung learner, okay? Naiintindihan na ba? Although si Sika kasi, oh, maganda siyang pakinggan but hindi siya, hindi siya, kumbaga, hindi siya yung swak for the word na <coughs> or the term encouragement. Okay? So, dapat i-contextualize nyo din teachers. Ano ba yung encouragement dito? Ano ba yung tinutukoy sa question na to? Okay? Kasi kinukumpare, di ba siya, sa praise. So, yung tamang sagot teacher is letter A. Naintindihan na po ba? Kasi mayroong meron sa ating mga nakakuha na uh, maling sagot. So teachers, at least by now, you have the uh, knowledge. Now you have the knowledge na kailangan i-contextualize niyo yung mga sagot niyo. E, uh, dapat pag-isipan yung maigi, nagre-reflect kayo, you're using your metacognition for you to be able to get the correct answer. Ayun. So buhay pa ba ang ating mga teachers? Mukhang yung iba hindi ko na or baka nasihiya lang sumagot. No? How about our our girl powers there? Parang si Sir Arnel, si, si Sir J yung mga <laughs> yung ano dito, yung buhay for this question. No? Ayan, try lang ng try teachers. The more you try answering uh, questions na mga ganito, although difficult yung iba, di ba? Pero mas nabubus po yung inyong or parang mas nai-enhance yung Um, nai-enhance yung knowledge niyo, mas nag improve yung test-taking skills niyo. Kasi yan lang naman yung, kumbaga, that is one way for you to be able to uh, master, di ba, yung mga concepts. One way para sa, para kumbaga, yung testmanship niyo, mas maging stronger or mas mag, mas strengthen yung testmanship niyo, na talagang i-apply niyo yan. Yan yung mga, yan yung mga i-apply niya during the, during the let. Kaya mas maganda ngayon pa lang, you try and try at least hindi importante na yung mga yung mga mistakes nyo sa sa kunyari nagkamali kayo sa item number 25, that is fine. Basta importante on the day of the let, uh, maaalala niyo yung correct answer and not not yung mga naging mistakes nyo, okay? Doon sa mistakes nyo, matututo kayo and hindi niyo na iuulitin. <laughs> Ah, yung pe. <laughs> Pera pala yung yung ano, yung problema ni Mom Marites. Naku, Mom, pare-pareho tayo, pare-pareho tayo. No, charot naman. Darating na lang yan, Ma'am, yung pera, darating yan. 
pera pala yung problema ng iba, no? Lahat tayo, may problema natin yung pera. Pero kailangan makapasan na tayo sa let para baga, mag, parang mag-move forward na tayo. Marami tayong ma-achieve. Kasi ano yan, eh? Um, baga, weapon nga yan as a teacher para sa mas magandang opportunities. Okay? Sige. Move forward na tayo. Item number 26. The guidelines regarding the components of successful collaboration include blank. Letter A, skilled leadership. Letter B, a common mission and purpose. Letter C, recognizes partnerships with persons considered as equal contributing members. Letter D, all of the above. Let's see. Ano kaya yung mga sagot na ano kaya yung sagot nating mga teachers dito? Ayan, si Sir J. May sagot na si si Ma'am Joyce din. Ayan, teachers, consider all the options kung tama 'yan. Reflect kayo kung kailangan ba 'yan sa paano kung tama 'yan lahat. <laughs> okay. Guidelines regarding components of successful. Ano ba yung mga components ng successful collaboration? Skilled leadership ba? Importante ba yan? Siyempre, di ba? Correct. Letter A. Check na check. Common mission and purpose. Siyempre, dapat may common mission and purpose in order to have a successful collaboration. Okay? Tama si letter B. Si letter C naman recognizes partnership with persons considered as equal contributing members. Lalong-lalo na si letter C. Diba? So, yan. Pag, huwag agad, teachers, pag nakita nyo si A, skilled leadership, tama na si skilled leadership. Okay, si A na yung sagot ko. Pero, nakita nyo si, ano, si B and C. E di, ligwak kayo, ba? Diba? Kasi nakita mo yung si B and C, tama din. So, huwag tayong maging impulsive, teachers, sa pagsasagot ng mga questions. You have to consider all the options and that's when, after that, sa kanyo i-weigh kung ano ba, yung, uh, ano ba yung best answer. Am I going to consider all of them kasi tama naman sila lahat or meron lang bang isang best answer. So, ganun dapat uh, yung thinking nyo teachers when answering uh, let questions. Okay? Huwag lang makontento sa isa. Tingnan nyo din yung, uh, yung ibang options. Ba, wala yung meaning ha, teachers. <laughs> Walang ibang meaning yung teachers. So, yan. Ganyan dapat yung gagawin nyo. So, yung sagot po dito ay letter letter D. Letter D yung sagot natin. Kasi tama sila lahat. So, all of the above. Number 27. Parents who do not seem to want to be involved in the child's school or who may seem angry at the schools should be blank. Letter A, encourage to take part in their child's education. Letter B, remove from the educational team. Yan. Letter B ba? Letter C, limited in their participation as decision makers. Letter D, encourage to let the school take charge of their child's future. Let's see nga, teachers. Ano kaya yung um, sagot nyo dito? Okay. okay, very good, teachers. You got the correct answer. Most of you naman pinili ay letter A. Of course, encourage to take part in their child's education. Hindi naman porket um, hindi involved si, si, si parents, no? Or uh, walang pakialam. Aalisin nyo na siya sa educational team. Again, uh, yung, yung ano, yung yung parents uh, vital may vital role yan lagi sa education ng bata, 'di ba? O kaya limited in their participation at magdedesisyon na lang ba si parents, decision makers lang ba sila? Limited lang sila limited lang ba sila sa ganun? Hindi din, no? Letter D encourage to let the school take charge of their child's future. So bala na sa school. Again, teachers, sa mga questions sa let no, pag ganitong question, hanapin niyo yung pinakamabait. 
yung pinakamabet ay yung pinaka learner centered and yung pinaka ideal so pag nakita niyo yon alam niyo na si niya yung sagot ay si letter A that is encourage to take part in their child's education kasi mahalaga yung mga magulang in the education of their children hindi lang yan si teacher hindi lang yan si principal kaya nga may mga stakeholders po tayo sa school yung tinatawag natin yung mga stakeholders Number one, just yung uh, yung parents, uh, yung principal, yung mga staffs ng school, yung community. Yan dapat alam niyo teachers na hindi lang um, hindi lang isa yung nagte take part sa sa learning or para magkaroon ng holistic development yung mga students, but uh, it takes a village, de ba? It takes a village para para successful talaga yung magiging or magiging holistic yung learning ng ating mga students. Sige po. Naintindihan po ba? Buhay pa ba ang ating mga teachers? Okay, kung inaantok na, tapik-tapikin yung sarili nyo. <laughs> Kasi importante ang ating discussion for this evening. Just like before, lahat yun importante po. Okay? Yan, letter A. Number 28. Which is not an empathetic response that a teacher could share with the student. Okay, not teachers. Tignan niyo yung not. Anin ba yung hindi empathetic? Okay, Al alam niyo ba yung word na empathetic? That is um deeper or yes, deeper than the word sympathy, de ba? Sympathy, em empathy and sympathy. So yung empathy mas deeper siya compared to sympathy, no? You're putting yourself on the shoe of the other. Okay? Tinitingnan mo yung sarili mo. What if nasa sitwasyon ako ng taong ito? Ano kaya? So, ano yan? Letter A ba? I can see that you're frustrated. Okay? Empathetic response, response ba yan? Uh, I can see that you're frustrated. Letter B. You're angry about what just happened. Letter C. Let's sit down and let me explain it to you. Letter D, I'm trying to understand how you feel. Which among them yung hindi empathetic? Okay, ayan. Madaling matukoy, di ba, teachers? Si letter B, parang sinabi ni teachers, kung baga, sa, sa, sa language natin, parang sinabi niya, ano, galit ka sa nangyari? Parang ganyan, di ba? Parang... Parang ano din, galit din. Parang may ano din. Iba din yung tone. Maaring maging tone ni teacher kapag sinabi niya yan. So, you know, uh, pag nabasa niyo yan, after niyo mabasa lahat ng, ng options, and nakita niyo yung si letter B, yan, mag-derive kayo na siya yung hindi empathetic response among the, among the options. Okay? Yan. Dapat teachers widen yung vocabulary niyo kasi baka, baka merong hindi pa alam kung ano yung empathetic. No, dapat alam na alam natin lahat ng mga uh, yung mga ganyang um, yung mga ganyang mga terms. Sige po. Yan letter B. Number 29. Which of the following indicates problems with haptic? Okay, haptic. Haptic has something to do with with what? With touch, 'di ba? Touch. Okay. Which of the following indicates the problems with haptic discrimination? Is that A, poor handwriting? Letter B, unable to locate source of uh, source of sound? Letter C, cannot retell a story in sequence? Letter D, can shift from one activity to another? Alin ba dyan, yung haptic? So pag alam nyo yung konsepto ng haptic, madali nyo yung mahahanap. Okay, ha, nasan yung, nasan yung mga teachers natin sa, sa ating chat box? Okay, galaw-galaw ating mga teachers. Bawal ka marin dahil paano tayo papasa <laughs> at magtatap? Di ba po? Okay. Si Ma'am Nona, letter A. Mr. Arnel, letter... Ah, hindi. Parang kanina tong sagot ni Sir Arnel. Okay, about pro 
how about uh, the other teachers? Ano yung sagot natin? Nalilito ba? Okay, si Ma'am Joyce, letter B. Ayan, teachers, again, pag sinabi nating haptic, ano yung haptic? Diba, it, it has something to do with um, touch, with, yes, with touch. Ano ba yung B? Diba, pag nakita yung B, hindi siya haptic, unable to locate source of sound. Mm -hmm. Haptic ba yan? So, hindi, di ba? So, cross out nyo si B. Si C, cannot retell a story in sequence. Haptic ba yan? Di ba? Tatanungin nyo yung sarili nyo teachers lagi. Haptic ba yan? O ano ba yung hinihingi? Can shift from one activity to another? Is that haptic? And then, yung letter A. Poor handwriting. Something to do with haptic po ba? Of course, letter A. Kaya nga dapat at teachers, alam nyo yung meaning na ano ba yung haptic. Kasi kung hindi nyo alam yung haptic, then it would be hard for you to, uh, to find the correct answer. But if you know, madali lang yan. So, poor handwriting, of course, that's haptic. Then that is the correct answer. Very good, teachers. Item number 30. Medyo mahaba-haba. Kunin identified specific teacher behaviors that effectively increase students' attention and learning. Which of the following is a skill that effective teachers use? Letter A, plan lessons on the spur of the moment to capitalize on creativity. Uh -huh. Letter B, set high expectations for achievement. Letter C, capitalize on the teachable moment by digressing. Or parang, mina, parang you're frequently, uh, parang nag-jump ka, no? Frequent from, from the topic. Okay, yung C po, parang nag-jump ka. Hindi pa nga tapos. Hindi pa nga tapos yung, ano, yung isang topic. Nag-jump na agad sa isa pa. So, letter D naman, do most of the talking in the classroom. Alright, sige. Tingnan natin kung ano kaya yung sagot ng ating mga teachers. Okay. Huwag magpapalin lang, teachers. Alin ba yan dyan yung pinaka-ideal? I'll give you the chance to change your answer. Spur of the moment to capitalize on the creativity. On creativity. Nga. Hindi si letter A yung sagot, teachers. Sige, hanapin nyo yung tamang sagot. Si C ba? Positive ba si C, teachers? mag increase ba yan ng student attention and learning by digressing frequently from the topic? You're jumping, di ba? Hindi pa nga tapos yung isang topic, then you're jumping ag agad into another. So, ano yung tamang sagot, teachers? Okay. So, yung D, hindi din siya. Very negative. Do most of the talking in the classroom. That's that's not. Okay. Again, sabi ko, ba Answer. Learner center dapat po yung sagot nyo. Yung do most of the talking in the classroom, Eh, di ba teacher-centered yan? Para kanyang, ano, stage on the stage. You are presenting all the information. You're not allowing your students to to work uh, or to think on their own. Di ba? Parang you do, the most of the, you do most of the talking in the classroom. So, hindi siya. So, yung ano naman, yung C, hindi din siya, di ba teachers? And sabi ko, hindi din si A. Kaya, yung pinaka-ideal dyan na sagot, teachers, ay letter. Set high expectation. Okay, one moment. Okay, wala si ano ko. Okay, teachers. Again, yung tamang sagot is letter B. Set high expectations for achievement. Okay. Yan. So, na-realize ata ng iba na mali yung sagot nila. So, letter B is the correct answer. Okay, very good to those who got it correct. Okay. 
Ayan, number 31. To assess a student who struggles both academically and socially in the classroom and community settings, what type of assessments need to be administered to determine eligibility for, uh, for mild yes, for mild intellectual disabilities? To assess a student who struggled both academically and socially in the school and community settings, what type of assessment need to be administered to determine eligibility for mild intellectual disabilities? A. Group administered IQ test and speech articulation test. B. Individually administered IQ test and adoptive behavior. Assessment, letter C. Intelligence screening test and fine motor assessment. B. Individual math reading assessment. Math and reading assessment. Okay, sige nga. Again, answer in a, in a learner-centered manner, okay? in a learner-centered manner. And please understand the question. Ano ba yung hinihingi dyan? Sige, let me see. Ano bang mga sagot ninyo? Sige po. Okay, sige. Okay, I can see na yung mga sagot ninyo ay letter C. Aha, letter C ba? Intelligence cleaning test and fine motor assessments. Sige, I'll give you a chance to change your answer. Pagpilian nyo dyan, teachers. Ano ba? Ano ba yung hinihingi? Teachers, nag-struggle si student both academically and socially. Socially, di ba? Ano ba yan? Ano ba yung perfect answer dyan? Okay, yung malito, teachers. Ayan. Sige. Ah, sorry. Okay, teachers. The correct answer is letter B. Sabi ko nga, teachers, si student, struggle, nagsistruggle siya academically, di ba? and socially. So it's, it has something to do with their okay? It has something to do with their um with their IQ and adaptive behavior. Hindi siya speech articulation, hindi siya sa fine motor assessment, math and reading assessment. So hindi din yung uh, yung question teachers, okay po? Para makuha niyo yung tamang sagot. So yan and of course, sabi ko nga, learner-centered po dapat yung sagot nyo. Hindi naman dapat, sa, hindi naman dyan sa question, hindi naman yung inihingis for group. ba? Individually and administer or individually administered IQ test and adoptive behavior assessment. Yun yung dapat na uh, going assessment ni teacher. Okay? To determine eligibility for mild intellectual disability. So, uh, consider all the context clues available sa question para makuha niyo yung correct answer. Okay, let's move forward. Number 15. What is the essence of inclusive education? Okay, sige, wala na dapat magkakamali dito, teachers, ha? Essence of intellectual or of inclusive education. Okay, so, okay, bawal na magkamali dito, teachers, kasi alam kong paulit-ulit na to sa atin. Ano yung essence ng inclusive education? Okay, mabilis nang sumagot ating mga teachers. Yan, inclusive education, that is, okay, tama yung lahat ng sagot. Diyan sa, uh, sa options, di ba? Yung mga options, tama sila lahat. But letter C summarizes them. Okay? Sinasummarize na ng letter C. Yung lahat 
ng option. So, so, so yung tamang sagot dyan, teachers, ay walang iba kundi ang letter C. Very good. Yan. Ito naman. Okay. Here's the question. As a special education teacher, Mr. Liagas has a student of different skills and levels. He therefore prepares activities for each group like fast learners, average learners, and slow learners. So what is the basis of Mr. Liagas for doing this? Is it A, law of readiness? Letter B, varied activities and multi-level activities. Letter C, interesting lessons. Letter D, maximi maximizing potentials. Okay, sige nga. Let's see. Ano kaya yung sagot? Again, teachers, look at the, look at the context clues. Dapat kahit wala sila. Uh, kahit hindi sila naka-highlight dyan, nakikita nyo yung mga context clues, no? Ano kaya, bakit kaya ginagawa yan ni Mr. Liagas? Nag-prepare siya, may activities for fast learners, average learners, and slow learners. Ano kaya, bakit niya yung ginagawa? Or ano yung basihan niya? Alright, so yung sagot natin na teachers ay letter Meron ding B dito. Okay. So, yung maximizing potentials kasi, di ba? Pwede kanyang malin lang. You might choose that. Pero hindi siya yung, um, yung tamang sagot. Siya, hindi siya yung pinaka hinihingi dyan. Pag nakita niya yung student of different skills and levels, yung pag-consider niya sa mga students na fast learners, average learners, then, madali niyong makukuha yung sagot na letter Letter B, varied activities and multi-level activities. Kaya nga tayo, di ba, teachers, merong um, project menu na binibigay as uh, one of the differentiated instruction kasi alam natin na iba-iba ang levels ng ating mga learners and iba-iba okay, din sila ng, ng needs, iba-iba din sila ng skills or yung preference, yun yung mga kinukonsider natin. So, Varied activities and multi-level activities. So, yan. Yan yung tamang sagot po, teachers. Ayan. Very good sa mga nakakuha ng correct answers sa ating chat box and sa ating live stream. Let's continue. Item number 34. We want to determine how loud sound is. Which of the following would give us that information? Is it A, frequency? Is it B, decibels? Is it letter C, hearing aid? Letter D, hertz? Okay, gusto mong malaman kung gaano ba kalakas yung sound. Ano ba yung, gaga, uh, ano ba yung, ano ba yung uh, magbibigay sa atin ng information na ito? Let's see nga. Okay, we have two answers. Okay. Sabi ni Sir Arnel, letter B. How about yung iba, teachers? Are you still uh, are you still awake? All right. So sabi ni Ma'am Nona, letter B then. Si Ma'am Aileen, letter C. Okay. All right. Okay, sige, teachers. The correct answer for this item is none other than letter letter B, decibels. Kung gusto nating malaman kung gaano ba siya ka loud yung sound, okay, that uh, yung gagamitin natin dyan, okay, yung magbibigay sa atin ng information ay yung decibels. Okay po? 
Okay, very good. To those who got the correct answer, very good. Sa mga hindi pa nakapagsagot, I hope that you're nagtasagot din kayo um, on your own teachers, no? To practice your and uh, test taking uh, skills and yung knowledge niyo din. Ito, next question. Lisa could not speak because of certain muscles in her vocal tract which she could not move. What condition does she likely have? Is it A, aphasia? Letter B, apraxia? Letter C, autism? Letter D, mutism? Sige nga po. Okay. Sagutan muna ninyo to teachers, no? One moment. Pag-isipan. Okay, tapos na ba ang ating mga teachers? Okay, I can see here um, answers like letter D, C, C. Is that C ba? Autism? Yan, teachers, yung um, tinutukoy ko kanina, no? Di ba kasi nag-present ako ng um, concepts and nabanggit ko yung letter D which is mutism, di ba? If you can remember kanina, pag sinabi natin mutism, certain muscles in her vocal trunk ang hindi nagagalaw, okay? which she cannot, which she could not move. Kaya nagkakaroon tayo ng mutism. So teachers, yung correct answer for this item ay I letter, letter D. Okay, letter D, which is mutism. Kindly take note of this, teachers. Okay, pag sinabing mutism, certain muscles in her vocal tract or in your vocal tract, uh, which you cannot or which you could not move. Okay? Okay, let's move forward. Mutism. Item number 36, which of the following is not a domain in the community-based instruction. Okay, alin ba dyan? Letter A, domestic domain. Letter B, reading domain. Letter C, community domain. Letter D, leisure domain. Sige nga. Paano kaya ninyo ito sasagutan, teachers? Okay, that's still inclusive education. That's under community-based instruction domain. Ano ba yung, um, sige, gamitin nyo yung add one out as a technique to answer this question. <clears throat> okay. Uh huh. Wala pang sumasagot. Okay. Si domestic, alam niyo yun, di ba? That's home or um, home living, domestic domain. Recreation or leisure, alam niyo din yan. That's enjoying or relaxing, di ba? At lalong-lalo na si community domain. Alin ba dyan yung naiiba, teacher? Sige nga, hanapin nyo yung pinaka-naiiba kasi yun yung, um, yun yung 
kulo nyo dyan, or yung um, technique na magagamit nyo yung add one out. You know domestic, you know you know community domain, you know leisure. <laughs> Bi ata daw sabi ni Ma'am ano, ni Ma'am Jepin. <laughs> na try na lahat, no? Yung bina lang yung iba. Yung hindi. Okay, teachers. ba diba, yung domestic, yung community domain, yung leisure domain, they're all under community-based instruction. Okay? Pero yung leading domain, yan yung naiba. ba diba? So, again, add one out. All, um, alam niyo yung A, A, C, and D. Pero naiba si letter B. Maliban sa alam niyo talaga na hindi siya yung tamang sagot, yung letter B. So, magandang magamit nyo din yung technique na yan. Okay po? So, yung sagot ay si letter B, si reading domain. Kasi yung mga, yung mga, uh, ano ba yun? Okay, kindly take note of these teachers. Meron tayong for community-based domain. Okay? Or instruction domains. So, yan yung domestic domain. We have the vocation or yung work experience nyo. Yung domestic, yun naman yung independence nyo. Yung home living nyo. Okay? And then we have also recreation or leisure domain. More of enjoyment and relaxation. Okay? You, you enjoy, you relax. Okay? And yung community, yun yung community resources. Okay po? So yan yung apat na domain. Community-based instruction domain. Okay? Kindly take note of them. It might be important, no? May baka, malay nyo lang. Pag mga ganitong tanungan talaga, teachers, gagamitan nyo na lang talaga ito ng, um, kumbaga, knowledge nyo sa mga ganitong, kasi alam nyo yung domestic, yung community, yung leisure. Pero si reading, na iba siya, di ba? So, si reading nyo, correct uh, answer. Kasi siya yung hindi. Community-based instruction domain. All right. Sige, let's move forward. To those who got the correct answer, okay, congratulations. Buhay po ba ang ating mga teachers? Nalaban po ba para sa lisensya? Okay, wag pang hinaan, no? Pag nagkakamali, okay lang yan. Ngayon lang kayo magkakamali, teachers. Don't worry. On the day of the let, hindi na kayo magkakamali. Tsaka minsan lang naman kayo nang magkamali ngayon, di ba? <laughs> Ayan, very good. Let's move forward. Yan, buhay pa, lalaban pa. Tatahimik-tahimik lang yung ating mga teachers, pero talagang nakapokus, no? Very good teachers. Ay, gusto ko yan. Buhay pa ba ang beshi ko? <laughs> buhay pa ba ang mga beshi ko dyan? Ayan, di ba? Pauso yan ngayon, eh. So, yan. Uh, laban pa, mga beshi para sa lisensya. Mga teachers natin. Ang ating mga susunod na LP. Let's move forward. 37. Which, ah, oh, naulit, no? One moment. Naulit ba? Ah, okay, naulit na. Hmm, okay, sige. Parang namunto. Okay, item number 38, teacher. Val is a teacher in an inclusive school as a way of integrating her students with and without disabilities she allows them to spend their meal times together what kind of integration does Val or does Val practice in this situation is it a social integration b academic integration c locomotor integration Letter D, human integration. Okay? Again, look at the context clue. Ano yung hinahanap natin? Okay. Si teacher Baldaw, teacher siya sa isang inclusive school. Since gusto niyang i-integrate si students niya na meron at yung mga walang disabilities, so she allowed, uh, parang hinayaan daw or in-encourage niya, no? parang siguro nag-set ng 
uh, activity si Teacher Val na yung mga student niya sama-samang kakain okay, to spend their meal times together. So ano daw bang klase ng integration ang ini uh, pinractice ni Teacher Val in this situation? Social integration ba yan? Letter A, uh, letter A po ba? Letter B, academic? Academic? Hindi, no? Wala naman yung kilalaman dyan yung allowing them to spend their meal times together. So, hindi naman siya academic. Si si ba? Locomotor? Hindi din, no? Locomotor, hindi din siya. Human integration? Hindi din. So, yung tamang sagot, very good. Congratulations sa mga nakakuha ng correct answer. Si social integration. So, yan, teachers, nakukuha niyo na yung um, technique para sagutan siya. Kasi hindi niyo naman yan alam yung mga integration na yan. No? Pero alam yung, alam yung meaning ng, ano, alam yung ibig sabihin ng social. Okay? Pag social, you, you allow them to, to spend their times together. Diba? Nakikipag-socialize ka kikisama ka sa iba-ibang mga tao so yan by by uh, by knowing that so madali sa inyong nasagot madali, madali niyo siyang nasagot no that this question ang hinihingi niya or ang hinihingi ang sagot ay social integration very good ayan very good ang ating mga teachers let's uh, let's move to the next item jane was given special activity under the supervision of the special um, education teacher in the re resource room. Which of the following was given to Jane? Letter A, accommodation. Letter B, modification. C, assimilation. Letter D, both uh, or both A and B. Binigyan daw si Jane ng special activity. Ano kaya ang tawag dyan? Accommodation ba yan? Modification? Alam nyo na ba ito, teachers, yung mga ganitong concepts? Hindi nga. Pag binigyan mo ng special activities, so syempre, garo, I mean, parang Pag binigyan mo ng special activity, parang, di ba? Um, iba. Iba siya. From the word special, iba from the other students. Ano kaya ito? Ayan, may mga sagot na ang ating mga teachers. Sabi daw A, may B. Okay, A, B. Sige nga teachers. A ba yan? That's it. Kung ano ba yung tamang sagot. Okay, letter B. You might be wondering, bakit po modification yung sagot sa item na ito? dito tingnan natin Okay, let's uh, let's differentiate ano ba yung assimilation, accommodation and modification. So, di ba si si assimilation naman sa education uh, as an education concept, ang ibig sabihin niya is fitting that idea into what they already know. Okay? Fitting one idea into what uh, the student already know. That is assimilation. Okay, 
So, yung letter B naman, or yung accommodation, same task is given to everyone else. So, pare-pareho lang yung task. Or regardless of, ano, um, of needs ng studyante, same task is given to everyone else. Pag modification, modification naman, uh, yung ibig sabihin naman yan is changing some parts of the task. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, since, di ba sa question natin, si Jane daw, binigyan siya ng special activity. Ibig sabihin, may modification doon. Okay? May notify yun ni teacher. Hindi, hindi yung, um, yung task na binigay kay Jane, uh, hindi siya pare, pareho sa ibang mga students. Okay? So, may mga parts doon na um, may notify ni teachers para kumbaga uh, makater or uh, yes, makater yung needs ni Jane. Okay po, kaya modification. Kaya, from the word, kaya nga teachers from the word uh, modify, di ba? Modify. You're changing. Okay, minamodify mo um, some parts of the task. Okay? So please paki uh, paki take note po ng pagkakaiba ng tatlong ito, teachers. Yan. There's a specific task para sa kanya na hindi pareho sa kanyang mga classmates. Okay, let's move forward. Item number 40. Which of the following is not a principle applied in the use of UDL? Ano yung UDL, teachers? Tandaan nyo pa ba po yung UDL? Yung UDL po, uh, i-discuss ko later. Yan yung Universal Design for Learning. Ano ba? Alin ba dyan yung hindi principle ni UDL? Is that A, multiple means of engagement? Letter B, multiple means of assessment. C, multiple means of representation. Letter D, multiple means of action and expression. O dapat teachers, um, masasagot niya lang to kapag alam niyo yung principles of universal design for learning. So you may, you may have a further read of UDL teachers kasi uh, sa, sa Prof. Ed, that may possibly, alam niyo yun, lumabas, pwede din siyang lumabas. No? I think nga parang included siya. I, parang, oh yes. Yeah, tama, tama teacher. So yung UDL, pag-aralan niyo siya teachers, abisaduhin niyo din siya. Ano ba yung meaning, meaning ng UDL? Although I have here, no, parang sukais naman yung, um, yung info na nakuha ko. Sige nga, ano yung, ta ano yung sagot niyo, teachers? If you do not know the answer, just make a wise guess for this. Okay, sige. Ano ba ang sagot nyo? Forty. Letter C. Okay, let's see kung ano tama ba yung sagot nyo, teachers. Okay, yung tamang sagot is, sagot is letter B. Multiple means of assessment. That is not a principle of UDL. Okay, let's discuss UDL further. Ano ba pag sinabi natin UDL? Okay, ano ba yung kaibahan ng universal design sa universal design for learning? Okay, so yung universal design, designed by all people. Designed by all people. Pero yung universal design for learning, that is a process, flexible siya, uh, more inclusive, and yung approach niya is for individual needs. Okay, so pag universal design kasi, kumbaga, 
um, fit siya para sa lahat, di ba? Dinesign siya for all, regardless of the needs, the individual needs. Kaya nga, kaya nga tinatawag na design by all people. Pero yung universal design for learning, which is UDL, that is uh, more inclusive compared to the universal design. And sabi ko nga, approach niya is for individual needs. So, nakukonsider na yung individual needs. So, yan yung pagkakaiba. And teachers, yung principles ng ng UDL, ay yun nang nabanggit ko. First is the representation, yung pangalawa is yung engagement, and lastly, yung action and expression. So, yun yung mga principles ng UDL. Okay, I hope that na i-take note niyo yan, teachers. Okay, very good. Sa mga nakakuha ng correct answer, let's move forward. Item number 41. James' cornea has been damaged, which leads his cornea to produce images that are not equal in focus. What kind of visual impairment does James have? Okay, so kung kanina nag-take note kayo or naintindihan nyo na okay, yung mga concepts na nababanggit sa baba or sa options, makukuha nyo yung correct answer. Ano ba yung tinatawag na um, kapag yung cornea nagpo-produce ng images that are not equal in focus or parang baga distorted, di ba? So ano ba siya? Nearsightedness ba siya? Or letter B, astigmatism. Letter C, farsightedness. Letter D, cortical impairment. Okay. Okay. So, yung sagot na ating mga teachers, merong letter B. Okay. Most of you naman, yung sagot ay letter B, astigmatism. Let's see, tama ba yung sagot na ating mga teachers? Yan. Very good. So, yan. Nakita nyo na talaga or naintindihan nyo na yung pagkakaiba ng astigmatism, nearsightedness, um, farsightedness, yung cortical impairment, ano lang yun? Yeah, teachers, uh, distractor. Okay po? Let's go back pa din. Yung mga sensory impairments. Again, pag nearsightedness, mas malinaw kapag mas, mal, uh, mas malapit. Tama. Kapag letter or ano naman, or yung farsightedness or, or hyperopia, mas malinaw kapag mas malayo. Yung presbyopia naman, merong trouble in reading small points. And yan yung sinasabi nating astigmatism kapag merong cornea damage and a common eye problem that can make your uh, vision blurry or distorted. And yung tunnel vision, huwag kayong malilito, yung tunnel vision, yung ma malinaw lang siya kapag, um, it's like a tube, uh, mas malinaw lang siya kapag naka-central, uh, yung focus nyo is center lang or central vision lang yung mas malinaw. Okay po? Continue. Item number Item number 43 na to. Okay. Harry had an accident in which his spinal cord has been damaged. Which of the following could Harry develop? A. Scoliosis B. Spinal breakdown Letter C. Paraplegia D. Arthritis Sige nga. Spinal cord has been damaged. Ano kaya ito? Ayan. <laughs> Effective pala yung ano ko, distractor ko dyan. Talagang. Okay. Spinal cord has been damaged. Hindi pa kasi natin to na discuss no? But let me discuss it further later. Uh, 
Okay. <laughs> A, scoliosis ba yan? Sige nga, teachers. Okay, yung scoliosis, hindi siya yung correct answer for this. No? And hindi din si spinal breakdown. Kasi ano yan, um, gawa-gawa ko lang yung teacher, si spinal breakdown. <laughs> diba? Effective, effective destructor siya. How about si C and D? Sige nga, pili kayo dyan, teachers. Is it C or D? Okay, sige. Okay, so sabi ko C or D. So, so yung napili nyo is letter C, para plan siya. Hindi si arthritis. <laughs> okay, sige. Yan, the answer is para plan siya. That is the, um, kapag yung spinal cord mo na damage, para plan siya. Let's see kung ano ba yung ano natin dito. Para plan siya, nakukuha siya, sa injury. So, yung spinal cord na the damage, so nagkakaroon ng inability to voluntarily move the lower parts of the body. So, yung so yung paraplegia, yan yung sa spinal cord, okay? So, hindi siya scoliosis. Hindi siya, although yung scoliosis kasi, di ba, sa ano din siya, sa spine din siya. But paraplegia is the, um, the accurate answer for that question. So, yan. Nadadamage kasi yung spinal cord. Yung arthritis naman, that is a neuromuscular disorder. Nagkakaroon ng inflammation or swelling of one or more joints. Okay? Take note of these pictures. Arthritis, uh, neuromuscular disorder siya to which um, nagkakaroon ng inflammation or swelling of one or more joints. Yan. Si, cerebra si cerebral palsy naman, affect a person's ability to move and maintain or maintain balance and posture. Okay. Connected to sa brain, si cerebral palsy. Okay? Naapektuhan ang pag-move uh, and maintain ng balance and posture ng isang tao. And then, by, by the way, pag sinaba natin um, cerebral palsy, Okay. Pwede pa rin siyang ma um kumbaga, pwede pa ring maging stable, no? Remain stable pa din yung isang tao na meron nito. However, pag sinabi naman nating um chronic fatigue syndrome, iyan naman yung sinasabi nating may get better or worse. So lumalala siya over time. Okay? Chronic fatigue syndrome. And ito yung extreme fatigue or tiredness that doesn't go away with rest. So kapag kahit gaano mong uh, kumaga, kahit gaano ka magpahinga, so parang laging pagod ka pa din. So huwag niyo i-diagnose yung sarili niyo ha baka kasi isipin niyo meron kayong ganito. Lalong lalo na ngayong ano, ngayong may review kayo. Pero yan, yung chronic fatigue syndrome kapag yung stream extreme yung fatigue or nararamdaman na pagod na hindi na madaan sa pahinga. So yan, chronic fatigue syndrome yung tawag dyan. And mas lumalala yan as time pass by. Okay? Mas nagiging uh, worst over time. Okay? Yan yung pagkakaiba ng mga uh, konseptong yan, teachers. So kindly take note of them. Okay, number 44. Ram has a disability that might get worse, uh, might, might, that might get better or worse over time. Which of the following is likely Ram's disability? Sige nga, baka may magkamali pa dito. Okay. 
Ayan. Huwag nang magkakamali, teachers, ha? Disability that might get worse, okay? Get better or worse over time. No ba yung hinihingi dyan? That is none other than, di naman yan arthritis, hindi yan paraplegia, hindi yan A, chronic heart disease. Baka may malito, no? Kasi nakita nyo may chronic. How about D, chronic fatigue syndrome? Okay? That is the correct answer. Okay? Very good, teachers. Sa mga nakakakuha ng correct answer. Konting ano na lang, teachers. Konting kembot na lang, no? Malapit na tayo. Okay, again, yan. Yung chronic fatigue syndrome that may get better or worse over time. Pag sobrang pagod na, na hindi nadadaan sa pahinga, that is chronic fatigue syndrome. Madaling matandaan, di ba, teachers? Okay, again, teachers, yung mga hindi pa nakakapag-avail ng ating LCPC review center, um, LCPC review books, again, available po sila sa ating LCPC um, review center sa Shopee store, no? Yan, nandiyan na po yung iba't ibang mga uh, major ship books, yung ating professional education and the ano pa ba? Uh, gen ed, okay? Gen ed gen ed books, okay? So avail niyo sila sila uh, avail pwede kayong mag-avail teachers uh, to aid your uh, preparation para sa anyong September let. Okay po. Okay, item number 45. Which of the following best distinguishes the definition of learning disabilities according to IDEA and NJCLD? Alam nyo ba yan? Si IDEA, di ba kanina na ano ko na yan, na discuss ko na si IDEA? Yung NJCLD naman teachers, yung ibig sabihin niya, um, yan po yung... Uh, Okay, yung meaning po ng acronym na NJCLD, that is National Joint Committee on Learning Disabilities. Okay, yan yung NJCLD. National Joint Committee on Learning Disabilities. And again, si IDEA, yan yung Individual with Disabilities Education Act. Ano daw ba yung sinasabing definition ni IDEA and NJCLD? ng uh, pag sinabing learning disabilities according to that uh, to, to ID and NJCLD ano kaya yan it, it, it is um is it letter A it is a learning difficulty that might lead to emotional disorder it is letter B it is a disorder letter C it is a discrepancy between one's mental capacity or letter D it is a disability in thinking reasoning and performing language and mathematical situations. Sige nga. Let's see kung ano kaya yung sagot ng ating mga teachers for this item. Yan. Sige, pag-isipan nyo teachers. Ano kaya yung definition ng idea ng learning disabilities? Yeah, I'll wait for your answer, teachers. Let me see kung meron na kayong idea dito. Okay, try lang ninyo, teachers. At least you try. Okay. How about the other teachers? Why pa ba? Malapit na ang ating 9.30, so... Try, try na mga teachers. I'll wait for the others para makita ko kung ano ba, may idea na ba sila regarding this question. Ano kaya? Ano kaya yung sinasabing um, definition ng learning disabilities according to IDEA and NJCLD? Uh, 
Okay, so si Sir Arnel, letter D. Si, si Ma'am Aileen din, letter D. Si Sir Jay din, letter D. <clears throat> okay. Nalilin lang kayo ng letter D, no? Sige, palitan nyo, teachers, yung sagot nyo. Hindi siya letter D. Nal Siguro inisip nyo ang haba kasi ng letter D and A. Baka yan yung sagot. Pero syempre, mag pag tinignan nyo naman kasi, di ba? Parang tama naman. No? So, you might think na baka yan yung tamang sagot. Ayan. Wala talagang pumipili ng tamang sagot. <laughs> okay. Teachers, tingnan nyo. Teachers, tingnan nyo yung tamang sagot. Can you see it now? That is what? Letter? That is letter B. Di ba ang ikli? Pero yan, yung, yan lang yung pagpapakahulugan ng idea. Pag sinabing learning, disabilities, that is a disorder. Okay? That is a disorder. So sino bang nakakuha ng correct answer? Yan, si letter C, si, si, si letter D yung sagot, yung A. Ayaw nyo sa maikli. <laughs> Ayaw nyo sa B. Kasi ang ikli lang, di ba? It is disorder. So, yan yung correct answer. Si letter B. Hindi si A, hindi si C, at hindi si D. <laughs> Trust your instinct. <laughs> Ayan. Sige, teachers, alam nyo na ha, ngayon, According to to idea or idea idea, um, pag sinabing learning disabilities, that is a disorder. Okay. Sige. Okay. Let's move forward. Item number forty six on the learning deficiencies, which is considered as learning. Disability in number, operation. Sige nga, wala nang magkakamali dito, teachers, ha? Okay. Sige. The answer is letter of course. Alam na alam niyo na to eh. Discalculia. So very good, Ma'am Jaira, Ma'am Marites, Ma'am Jefin, yan si Sir Arnel. Boy-boy na buhay na ang ating mga teachers. Malapit na kasi tayo matapos. All right, sige. Let's move to the last item, I guess. Parang last item na natin to. Ayan, discalculia teachers, no? Huwag kayong malilito. Ito, tingnan natin. Teacher Marie would like to use systematic feedback among her grade 3 pupils. Which of the following is not an example of this approach? Okay, letter A, negative reinforcement. Letter B, phrase. Letter C, error correction. Letter D, positive reinforcement. Sige, pag-isipan nyo teachers. Systematic feedback. Not. So, tatlo dyan sa, sa options na yan ay um, nagbibigay siya or gumagamit siya ng systematic feedback. Pero alin ba yung hindi? Sige nga, pag-isipan nyo nga. Okay, alin kaya dyan? Aha. Sige nga. I'm uh, tinitingnan ko dito kung 
um, tama ba yung uh, naiisip niyo teachers? Okay, pag pag nilay-nilayan niyo, ano ba yung negative reinforcement? Ano ba yung error correction, yung praise, yung positive reinforcement? Okay. Ano ba yung mga sagot? Letter B? Okay. Praise? Okay. Okay. Let me, um, hindi siya teachers. Letter B. Okay. Try to change your answer. Uh, Pag-isipan yung maigi. Okay. Hindi porket negative si ano? Si error correction. Yung error, no? Negative yung error, pero it doesn't mean na mali siya. Yeah. Let's see, sino kayang makakakuha ng correct answer dito? Ayan. Aha. Sige, sige. Tingnan ko nga. Nag-iisip mo ang mga teachers natin. Ayan. Teachers. Okay, let me... Sabi dito, si Teacher Marie daw, gusto niyang gumamit ng systematic feedback among her grade 3 pupils. Alin daw ba dito ang hindi example ng approach na to? Si positive reinforcement ba? Tama ba siya? Gumagamit ba siya ng systematic feedback? Tama, di ba? Si positive reinforcement. Si error correction naman, although si error is negative, still, you have to consider this as ano uh, as a whole error correction tinatama mo yung mali di ba tinatama mo yung mali so it it means kumagamit pa rin siya ng systematic feedback so tama din si si error correction no so ang natitira is dalawa si praise sa kasi negative uh, si negative reinforcement so, between these two, ano ba yung pinakamatimbang? Kumagamit ba ng systematic feedback si praise? So, when you're praising your student or your learner, syempre, di ba, gumagamit ka ng systematic feedback. So, the only um, option na natitira, which is si negative reinforcement, siya yung tamang sagot. Okay? Kasi siya yung um, in, in, uh, in this option, no? siya yung hindi gumagamit ng approach ng systematic feedback. Okay? So, hindi si negative reinforcement. That's why teachers, you have to think uh, well kung ano ba yung sasagot nyo. No? Pag-isipan nyo, yung error correction, kasi nakita ko kanina, pinili nyo siya. Again, teachers, huwag po kayong maging impulsive sa pagpili. You have to weigh your answers before you shade no yung yung answer sheet nyo bago nyo siya i-shade, pag-isipan nyo, pag nyo muna kung tama ba yung um, pinipili nyong sagot or sapat na ba yun. Kasi teachers, yan yung isa sa mga nagiging, um, nagiging pagkakamali ng mga nagtitake ng let kapag uh, agara nilang sinasagutan without them, alam mo yun, dinodobo, hindi nila utilize yung yung one minute, kumbaga, let's say for example, sa isang question, kasi may isang minuto ka, nasasagutan mo yun, pero nakaka-30 seconds ka pa lang, kasi nakita mo na, na parang mali itong isang ito, so, sinagot, sinagot mo siya, no? parang feeling mo siya yung not, without knowing, or without, um, alam mo yun, uh, ang tawag dito, without realizing na, hindi pala yun yung tamang uh, yung dapat mong pinili. Meron pa pala doon, meron pa pala dong mas dapat, okay? Or yung pinaka best answer. Kaya teachers, be cautious kapag sasagot kayo, no? Uh, dito pwede pa kayong magkamali. Again, sinasabi ko naman po yun sa inyo lagi, di ba? But uh, mas magandang inuulit-ulit natin na on the actual let. Let's mas pag-iisipan niyo. Utilize niyo nang uh, i-maximize niyo yung time niyo. Kasi every item sa prof ed, I think, mag-utilize kayo ng one minute. So, i-utilize niyo yung teachers. Huwag niyo yung sasayangin. As much as possible, basahin niyo siya. 
ng maigi. Intindihin niyo siya yung mga options. Pag-isipan niyo siya so that you will get the correct answer. And of course, yan. Pag-aralan niyo pa. Yung knowledge niyo again, teachers, yan yung inyong magiging weapon. No? Kasi kahit pa, ang galing yung, kumbaga, uh, yung test taking skills niyo, yung mga techniques na i-utilize or na-apply niyo na siya, still yung knowledge pa din, yung magiging, uh, ang tawag niyo parang capital niyo, number one capital niyo, so that masasagutan niyo siya ng, um, ng tama. No? As a, yung pag hinalo mo yung knowledge mo, yung test taking skills mo, yung testmanship niyo, no? plus yan, yung mga techniques, then you'll surely um you'll surely answer no yung best answer makukuha niyo yung best answer sa ganitong mga klase na tanong okay teachers so yan you did well tonight teachers um very active na naman ang ating mga future LPTs so pag-iihan niyo po yan kasi again kayo na yung mga magiging next LPTs natin yung yung September let yun na yung una at huli yung take kaya wag niyo nang sayangin teachers you have to give your best you have to alam mo yun maging motivated kayo lagi para every day no may mga bago kayong uh, naaaral may mga may mga bago kayong nalalaman para ma-aid niyo sa inyong gen ed and of course sa inyong prof ed and majorship ayan teachers magrest na kayo after this and then laban ulit para sa inyong lesson siya. Ayan, teachers, last item na yung 47. Iko-continue na natin siya the next meeting. Okay? So, again, thank you, teachers. Thank you, Sir Axel and LCTC. Salamat sa uh, isa na namang session na siksik at liglig. No? Ang dami na naman natin natutuhan. Yung mga hindi natin alam, balikan natin para ma-master na natin. So, yeah, thank you, teachers, and good night. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye po. Thank you so much. I'll stop sharing now. Okay, thank you, Poster Axel and LCTC. Okay, bye-bye.